is first of all just to kind of talk to you guys and uh um talk about the snow in austin but also to talk about pre-wiring my new construction um, i've done a little bit of research and I've, uh, I've done a good amount of research but um i'd like to hear from you guys if you guys have any uh any thoughts any advice um and just stuff maybe you would like to do in your house that you weren't able to do or anything like that um just kind of just kind of going over and um what people should do in their new smart home um so eventually people could come back to this video and use it to, to learn you know what i did and what we're going to figure out on this stream but it's awesome to hear from you guys uh, awesome to see you guys in chat already um really appreciate it uh seeing you guys already in chat is like uh super awesome i think we had 50 viewers before the stream even started which was in insane to me um but but how's everyone doing i'm right now we are getting pounded with snow uh here in austin texas it I mean like it's been 70 degrees for the past week and now snow i do not understand weather so uh yeah how's it going to be um i'm moving to hawaii I, i'm not doing the snow stuff how's it going macy i'm glad you uh glad you enjoyed the channel hopefully it's helping helping out a few people um the dashboards are really cool to do um i'm excited everybody likes those especially uh Especially the most recent one. It's, I think it's up to 20,000 views, which is awesome. <laughs> Travis, it's not snowing there. I promise. Probably 90 degrees and sunny. <laughs> Every season here, Scotland in the last two hours. That, it, so, so, like, cold, hot, like seasonal allergies. I mean, <laughs> that's, what, that's what seasons mean to me. Uh, Coming from Kentucky and Texas, it's just seasonal allergies. Allergies. <laughs> Watching from Belgium, awesome. How are you doing, Victor? That's awesome. But so many, so many different places uh, are in this community, like the home assistant community and everything. Um, all around the world, it's awesome. Hopefully, this stream time is uh, pretty good for everyone. I think, I think I picked it so it's like six o'clock ish uh, in the EU and. 11 to 12 in the uh, U.S., depending on where you're at. Jaguar Infinity, interested in the stream as you may be in a similar situation at the end of the year. That's awesome, dude. Building a house right now just seemed like the best option. We looked at buying a house just outright, but every time we went to a to an open house, they were like, yeah, this house is going to sell for about 100 grand more in two days. And like, it was just ridiculous. Like the housing market right now is so crazy. Uh, I don't know about in other parts of the world, but in the U.S., it's insane. And especially in Austin, where everybody's moving here right now, um, it it's an, it's it's crazy. Refurbishing that's awesome. I mean, yeah, having having your old having a old house and refurbishing it to be you know wired up and smart is is something that's really cool because you get that old that old vibe that old uh traditional house while still being a smart home which is i think really cool new construction here too had a design meeting on friday and need to confirm low voltage on tuesday well man i a good luck i do not we have not done the design meeting yet we have that in february and we i don't even know when the low voltage is i, I also have to figure out electrical too so um uh, I have to send out electrical first and then send out um, and then I have to go and talk to like a zoom call with the AV company to do the low voltage. So uh, that's something else I need to figure out um, is, you know, what should I add plugs? Should I um, add recess lighting and stuff like that? Um, yes, it is. It's a uh, process for sure. The new construction house is, um, uh, a lot of back and forth between different people all the time. It's crazy. Uh, have you guys got a budget for the smart home related stuff? Um, we have a budget. It's pretty, I mean, it's open-ended to a point where you know, I don't want to spend too much money, but um, I want to get, I want to make sure that it's future proof enough so that um, 
we're not have we're not you know regretting it and having to pay more to open up the walls later. Um, one of the biggest thing was conduit. Yeah, uh, Nicholas said I want a conduit for flexibility. Was it op- wasn't an option? Um, it's definitely going to be an option for me. I I I am like if they don't allow, I'm just going to put it in myself because because so it's a two story house. Uh, right? Uh, yes, yeah, a two story house. So I'm definitely getting conduit in the first floor. So and, and then like conduit to the first floor. So that I can always have ways to get down to the first floor. You know, getting in between floors is so hard, but getting into the attic is a little easier. So as long as I can get conduit to the first floor, then I'm at least okay. You know, at least okay. Uh, but uh, budget wise, I mean, I want to make sure that we have enough stuff to future proof us, so that we're not regretting it in the future. That's kind of the budget is I don't want to go crazy, but just enough type of thing um, where I, I want shades. Uh, you know, I want powered shades and stuff like that on a f- at least a few of our um, windows so that in the living room and in the our media room that um, we could control those via voice assistant or a button um, just to make it easier. Uh, are you considering a low voltage ring around the house? Ring around. I don't know what that means. Um, I've never heard of that. Uh, elaborate, Jeff. I I have honestly never heard of a ring around the house. To be honest. As for larger electrical boxes, you'll be happy with any smart switch. Shelly. Yeah, I actually do have that on my list to ask for extra deep electrical boxes. Um, so hopefully that's something they can provide. I, I've heard it's pretty cheap to to get that upgraded since it's like maybe a dollar per box or something. Um. So, or I, I mean, that could be a little bit more, but I, I don't know. Um, have you guys watched a recent video from Smart Home Solver? It actually came out pretty perfectly in time um, for for me to kind of uh, to kind of see what he's doing. He's actually building a house right now as well, and uh, so he he gave me some uh, some ideas in his video as well. Be sure to check him out. My focus is going to be Ethernet around the house to centralize points so I can control the network. Um, yeah, so that's my idea too. And that's something I need to figure out as well. So the idea would be to, uh, and, and they provide this and like a patch panel and everything. They uh, are going to wire all the Ethernet and all of the RJ6 to a centralized point in my house. Whether that's upstairs or downstairs, I need help on that. Like I have a spot downstairs and I have a spot upstairs, but I don't know where I want it. I I'm thinking upstairs so that it's easier to run new wire to the um, offices that'll be upstairs, um, just through the attic. But I I honestly I don't know what's going to be easier. Um, 120 volt is for all the house plugs, but a 24 to 48 volt for other devices, so you don't have a wall. Ports everywhere just have a low voltage in wall of voltage hmm gotcha uh yeah i've never i've never heard about that i'll definitely look into that is that something like it would be extra plugs or like just um or like uh ethernet plugs or ethernet outlets or something like that i no, i've never heard of that before but that, i mean that sounds good because um a lot of devices don't need that 110 120 volts Travis said, uh, "Can't if you can't add deep boxes for some reason, it's easy to change out." Yeah, yeah, that's I yeah I looked on Reddit and that's what they've said as well. But if I can get them, definitely going to try because I do plan on changing out almost all of the switches for smart switches um, eventually. But um, somebody said, "Let's get this video to 100 subs." Let's do it. I think you meant viewers, but yeah. <laughs> Um, put your patch panel where your service is going to come into the house or as close as possible. They're usually USB ports in the outlets. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I I don't know if I can customize the what outlets are. I know I can later, but I asked them if I could like supply them with smart switches and they said no. But um All right, all right, let's get you out of here. Remove all your God. Okay. 
Um, UK houses seem to be smaller than US, so I was looking at a cupboard under the stairs with runs less than 50 feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, our house is like 3,000 square feet, two stories. Um, but somebody said, so put your patch panel where your service is going to come in. I have no idea where that's going to be. I can figure that out later uh, whenever I go to the AV meeting. But I would assume that's downstairs. So I would either have a spot underneath the stairs or in an office closet. Uh, but I'd, I would almost rather have it upstairs in my closet, in my office closet. But I'm not sure if that's the best bet. I also have to make sure that um, that uh, everything is like good to go whenever I get to the AV with the electrical and stuff. Um, I also have to make sure I get ventilation to wherever I get it as well. Um, somebody said get AP access points. Um, Josh Pin, yes. Plan is get I think get three or four access points. Um, let me start sharing screen here. I can find my tab. And let's go to here. All right. Let's see if you guys can see this. Cat sick drops higher on the wall or in the roof for mesh Wi-Fi. Yep. Yes, that is that is the plan. I definitely need definitely need water access points. Right now in the current house we have, we just have one router. I like don't even have a mesh network right now and it's terrible. It's terrible. Um oh my uh my mic is echoing. Shoot. That's so weird. Okay. Thank you, Travis. Ah, that was OBS is sometimes very weird. Apologize. Um so Jasper said or Jasper said, remember to use Cat 6A and not just Cat 6. So I've thought about that. And Cat 6A is not really going to be um I'm, if if there's a run that'll be over 160 feet or 55 meters, then yes, I will use Cat 6A. But Cat 6, because it can do 10 gigabytes over like underneath 165 meters, then um, I think it should be fine. I think 10 gigabytes for future proofing for you know, a good amount of time is going to be fine. And then if I'm going to run conduit so that if I need, um, if I need fiber in the future then i can run that really easily uh that's the plan anyway i think i think what do you guys think um but i i cat 6a like it is if i upgrade everything it'll be a lot more expensive but um i don't i don't think it's necessary what do you what do you think yes do you think it is necessary don't go after usb ports and the outlets are too expensive and not people doing the same as good luck gotcha um are you doing multi zone temperature i am planning on it um so the house comes with a few things smart um cat 6a is not more expensive I, I don't know if that's true i think that it is right no okay so hold on man are you doing multi-zone sense so the, the house comes with honeywell um with honeywell z-wave apparently i've never heard of z-wave but um honeywell uh, thermostats. So I'll have multi-zone, meaning upstairs and downstairs. Uh, but I think that's it. I don't think that I'll have each room being its own thing. Uh, but I can, I can, I can take a look into that and see if that's an option because I do like that option. But I, I think up and downstairs is enough. But, um. Your lighting setup for this video is looking great. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate it. I've, I have a key light here, a key light to my left to like hold the shadow off a little bit. And then I have a light behind me to kind of separate me from the background. So I'm hoping I, I've, and I've done a, so much research on lighting and recently like to try and help these videos 
Uh, hopefully, you guys think the quality is good because I put in too much work into it. Um, go for upstairs in a closet over understairs option option just from a running a future wires perspective and get two low voltage boxes. How did everything just change? Um, hey, let's see. Sorry. And get just for and get two low voltage boxes with the pipe and two Ethernet and two coax interconnect to them. Okay, gotcha. Good idea. I, I am thinking upstairs as well, but uh, I did want to ask on here just to make sure. Cat six should be better against five G Wi Fi network, and Cat six is no is not more expensive. Okay, I'll definitely look into it. I just I thought it was more, uh, uh more expensive. Uh, Let's see here. So cost is neg negligible. Okay, then I mean, I definitely will ask about it uh, because if I can future-proof more, then that's always the ideal solution. Um, let's see here. Get electronic dampeners for zone heating and add them for 2.5K for three zones. I don't know what that is. Electronic dampeners. Okay, I'll look into that for sure. Uh, Cat 7 and Cat 8 is more expensive. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I've heard Cat Seven. One, I've heard Cat Seven and Cat Eight. It's not even standardized yet. Like they don't have a standard for those yet. Um, so I wasn't planning on getting those, and because I'll have conduit, I'll always have the option to come in with Cat Eight later down the line. But I don't think in the next. I mean, this technology has moved so fast, but I don't think in the next five ish years I don't need anything more than ten gigabytes. But you know, we'll see. Um, MQT, MQTT, Kemp scissors and use average across rooms. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I currently have one set up in my room, um, but it's, you know, uh, just a small one and it's, it's actually not hooked up to home assistant yet, but, uh, I'm going to go through the same process right now. Says Justin, uh, we just had a slab port on the house. We get six drops with it and they're going to let me run the rest of the drops I need. Thankfully. Yeah, Justin, that's awesome. I'm glad they're letting you, uh, you, run your own drops. I asked them yesterday and they said that I couldn't. Um, I know that some builders don't allow you to do it. And mine is one of them. Uh, unfortunately it's, uh, it's just not something they allow because they can't, uh, warranty out anything. If I change anything, I asked them and I like tried to like convince them to just to let me do something, even put in electric fixture, like lighting fixtures or, uh, light switches. But they, they said no, unfortunately. Uh, we get five drops. Um, unfortunately, that's like not enough. If you're really thinking about like, if you look at a house, it at least needs 14 drops. For a drop meaning one cable. And 14 meaning, let's say every single room, let's say it's a five bedroom house, like you need 14. You need at least two, one RJ6 and one Ethernet. I know RJ6 is not technically necessary, but for like reselling and having cable and stuff like that, you kind of do need it. Um, but yes. Okay. Thank you. Hammer cam for messaging me. Uh, I'll take a look at that after the stream here. Thank you. Um, rather than lighting switches, lights, lighting switch wires running back and forth to the ceiling rows, run those light beads and switches and wires back to the central closet on each floor. It gives you more flexibility and future use of the wiring. Okay, I'll look into that. I don't know exactly what you mean. Are you talking about like, uh, I know like Lutron has a system where you can put all your light switches in, in like a single single thing uh, or a single room with your network and everything. And then you can control it and, and change everything after that. Um, off for a second. Um, are you guys so thankful for everybody in chat right now? Because... I'm learning so much. Yeah, I can definitely tell you put some effort into it. Love the fill light in the background too. It's been looking for something similar. Yeah, it's just everything smart. It's just a uh it's just a light. It is just a lamp. And then I have this lamp on my uh um fridge as well that kind of gives the off put that it's doing this work here on, on my seat, but it's not. It's actually the there's a lamp behind me that's exactly the same lamp, but it's actually pointed at me. How many AC units? Two separate ones or dampeners? think to kind of want to make sure we get to because 
having two is much better. Uh, in my, I think we have two in this house. No, we don't. No, we only have one in this house and the dampener. The old house, it was really nice to have two. So hopefully we could have two. I think, I would hope that the house at this range would have two, but we'll see. I'll, I'll make sure to ask about that. Um, it will only blow HVAC to certain zones. AC at night won't be cooling the whole house. Yes. Uh, I would rather have it being per zone, meaning like per room almost, but I think that's probably going to be a little bit more expensive. Than I'm going to want to go. Um, but I don't know the price, to be honest, if you knew. Um, uh, HTV 3, uh, Cat 5E or 6, IR, Control, Audio, Return, HDMI. Data. Oh, yeah, somebody asked me earlier if I was doing HDMI uh, video. I want to, and that I do want to. Um, I don't know if I'll do it immediately, but I want to wire for it. Um, so I think that I'm going to put at 2 to 3 ethernets and then rj6 to each tv so that i have that option in the future one for like connecting the tv one for connecting something else and then one for ir but um i, I do want to do that for sure um and yeah each tv three cat five and then one coax yes josh yep yep that's i think that's the plan but um we we'll see i i do want to do that that is that is what i want to do Run two drops of Cat6 in two locations in every room of the house. HDMI video can be sent via Cat6. Uh, yep, yep, that's the idea. So, okay, uh, if you're looking at my screen, let me know if you guys can't see this. Uh, not that I... Jeff Hammer. Yeah, I figured you were Hammer Cam here. So they sent this blueprint shit in, like, the worst way. Counterclockwise. Okay, so here's our upstairs, right? And this is not the dimensions. I'm apparently not supposed to show you that, but um, so this bedroom three will be my room, right? Um, I don't even remember the question. So, oh yeah, so wherever we're planning on putting our desk, I'm planning on putting three to four Ethernet ports right there, maybe two on like two different sides and then one on the other side of the room. So each room that I think an office is going to be in, it's probably going to have like six drops if I can go crazy. If not, it'll have at least four um, in the office. Um, let's see here. Please RG6, not RJ6. Yes, RG6. Sorry, I'm... I, I just started this research literally, uh, when did we start? Like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Uh, so yes, I am fresh on these terms. Uh, so sorry about that. Our, our G6, not our J6. Um, are you going to use RLS hex point in each room? I don't know about each room. That's something I want to ask. I wanted to ask you guys as well. Like what is your experience with, um, wires hex hex points? So I did, I think, I'm not sure who I'm going to go with yet, but I did map some out. And I think that if I have at least one in the upstairs, then I might be fine, but I'm, I may put one in the game room here and then one in, in around my office here so I can get our two bedrooms. Uh, but I'm not sure yet. You just need to win, win the lotto and that will help the problems go away. That would be for sure, Jeff. I I would be uh, getting about 10 grand of, of cabling, if not more. I've heard, so I, I've been watching YouTube and Reddit, and I've heard people go crazy on the low voltage. Like, like, like some people go into like forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 on electrical and low voltage. It's crazy. I don't know if I need that much, but I mean, I wouldn't be opposed. I did two RG6 drops so I could have cable and over air. Being in Austin, you should have a nice selection of OTA. Um, not sure how often the cable is knocked out or it cuts the cord. Yeah. Um, who are these things? So I have cable and over the air. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't have cable right now. I'm not planning on having cable. I, I want to plan to have the ability to have cable, but I don't plan on having cable. I usually just use internet 
uh, Netflix, uh, uh, HBO Max, Hulu. That's usually what I use right now. Um, but uh, I, I want to have the ability, and then I know RG6 or G6 gives you the ability to do a few other things, like you said. So I don't think it's a bad idea. You guys can't even see most of the bedroom, too, can you? Okay. So here's the bedroom, too. My office will be the bedroom three. Chat is going so fast. I am not used to this. Thank you guys for all being here. This is awesome. Um, what is your manufacturer choice for networking? Made any decision? I have not made literally any decisions yet. I have not talked to the AV company yet. Um, I know Cat6 is standard. Um, I will probably have to pay a little bit more for Cat6A if I go with that, just to make sure. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to them about that. Um, but your manufacturer choice for networking. Oh, for networking. Um, I don't know yet. I'm thinking about, uh, uh, what is it? Like I always forget how to say the name. Ubiquity, but I'm not sure yet. Um, what do you guys think uh, is the best option here? Each room is probably overkill, depending on the walls, may even interfere with each other. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, so, I, I mean, as long as I have upstairs and downstairs, then I should be fine, in my opinion, um, for HVAC. Uh, I want to make sure we do that. I actually didn't think about that, so that's awesome that <laughs> you guys remind me of that. That's, that's amazing. Um, what options do you have for ISP? We have Gigabyte from something. Um, Travis, I sent you the... Uh, address Can you figure that out for me Canyon. I looked it up once I'll look it up here in a second um or Travis might thank you Travis wireless X points in in each room seems overkill no plus can always use data now for future yeah that's the plan is one, none of the devices that are going to be always in the bedrooms are going to be on wireless, most likely. I mean, it'll all be connected via uh, Ethernet, especially our computers, of course. Um, my wife really loves to be on her phone and hates whenever she doesn't have connectivity. But I do think it would be a little bit overkill if I had one in each room. I know people do it, um, but I, I think it is overkill and it's also expensive. But I'm thinking two upstairs and two downstairs and then maybe one outside what do you guys think i mean so here's the upstairs if i go back to the upstairs here it's a little sideways but if you can here let me let me just repeat it i really hate that they made it so terrible so here's our covered patio i'm thinking maybe of putting one up here uh outside so that our outside has wireless access um i'm also thinking about putting one in the family room and then maybe one in our master bedroom, but I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I mean, I've never had wireless access points before, um, so I'm not not one entirely sure. Holy crap! Hey guys, network engineer here. Definitely don't do every room. You will end up with worse coverage as APs talk over each other and create much more noise. You can turn that power down, but then you're just as well as to buy less. Nevertheless, and expand if needed. Okay, that makes sense. So, as a network engineer, uh, that's awesome that you are that because I mean, you have that's just so much experience. Where do you think I should put them? Um, like, if if this is the floor plan, I don't know how much you guys can see, but um, this is the floor plan. Then, should I put one in the family room and one in the master bedroom, or should I just put one upstairs and one downstairs, or I don't know, to be honest. Um, I'm looking at Ubiquity Unify wireless access points. For a normal UK house, I think it um, one in the attic would cover the whole house quite well, but I can always put one downstairs as well. PoE makes it easy. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the plan is to have PoE do the wireless access points. But um, right, so right now we have a we're we're renting uh, is it just two thousand. I think it's like 2,000 square foot, and I have a TV, so it's it's in the middle of the house upstairs, but I have a TV 
And um, whenever we're on our phones downstairs in the living room, it gets no coverage. Like my, we cannot even con- barely connect to it with our, our phones. And that could just be that my, my router is trash. It's like an uh, Asus router that I got forever ago, but no coverage down there. It's terrible. I can even get my Google Chromecast on my living room T to connect anymore. That's how bad the signal has gotten. Uh, and I, I'm like, oh, I need to upgrade. And then we decided to buy a house. And I'm like, oh, do I upgrade or do I wait and just buy, you know, a whole new system? Um, I would say two APs in the opposite corners favoring the two used most. APs in the hallways aren't isn't ideal as the best signal is wasted through air. Oh, okay, okay. So that would mean like master bedroom in the downstairs and the study almost. That would actually work pretty well. I like that. I like that. And then this is going to be rotated, but in the upstairs would be more like um, one in bedroom two and then one in bedroom four, basically. So this way. It would be in the same corners, though, of the house. Maybe I would put it in bedroom three, my room, and the game room. It would be like this way and then like kind of uh, four corners of a box. Same here, I don't have cable, but I have planned. If someone else do it, I use antenna to get my main channel. Gotcha. So apparently I have Spectrum, AT&T, and HughesNet. It looks like AT&T would be the fastest. Yeah, so I'm hoping Travis Travis just sent me everything. Travis is, uh, lives in Austin as well with me. Uh, so he's a good friend. Apparently I have Spectrum, AT&T, and uh, HughesNet. One, never go on HughesNet. Fuck that. Screw that shit. Not doing that. Um, but um, Spectrum is okay. I can deal with Spectrum. AT and T right now has been pretty solid, and I didn't want to go with AT and T when I got here. Um, but it's been pretty solid, and it's pretty pretty good experience so far, to be honest. So I'll probably go with AT and T to get that gigabit. Uh, but uh, we'll see if anything changes. I, if Google Fiber comes, I'm going straight there. But yeah. <laughs> AT&T up to one gigabit, Spectrum up to nine megabit. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, nine. Okay, 900. That makes more sense. Uh, I would say, okay, same here. I went with all Ubiquiti. I'm pretty happy. They have all in-wall ABs with a four-port switch. Yep, put them behind my TV. Okay. Yeah, I think um, if I do go with it, I'll get like a 16-port switch or something. Um, and then a router in in my network closet. And then... um they have like a security thing as well i'm not sure i haven't looked into it that much yet um okay well i just lost my here we go you guys went so hot so it's still 81 viewers you guys are amazing thank you for all these questions and all these answers i mean i mean i didn't even get to most of it so far and you guys are already blowing me away with how much i didn't know so this is amazing uh what light switches are you planning on using i like the look of the lutron switches but i don't want the lutron lighting switch system throughout um so i've been looking at a few recently um, and actually we'll be coming out with a review of some of them um but innovelli look good zeus zeus look good um i currently have a ge uh, z wave i don't like them that much uh but i, I innovelli and zeus are really my top players right now to uh who I'm going to pick. And if I do, I'm probably just going to go throughout the whole home, you know, all smart switches. So we'll, we'll see though. But that, I think that's the plan. Ubiquity for sure. Unless you go with Cisco. Uh, no, probably not go with Cisco. Um, that sounds one way more expensive and two. Eh. Rico also does a nice lighting system, but doesn't seem to work with home assistant. would like to know what you're playing. Yeah. So Zeus or in Z wave, um, that's the plan. I don't want to go with much wi- mini Wi-Fi things. And so um, Z-Wave is the perfect. And I've, I've not had any issues with my Z-Wave. I'm using the HUSB Z1 or ZB-1 uh, dongle, which has Zigbee and Z-Wave. Been working, working perfectly. I haven't had any issues. I actually just switched over to Open Z-Wave to um, add in an Innovelli switch, which is nice. And then I'll be, I'll have a, I have a Zeus zoos switch coming in the next probably two weeks um so uh, i'll 
put out a review for both of those and, and probably decide which one I'm going to go with after that. Um, just depending on how easy each one of them is to install, how, you know, what the connectivity is, what the abilities I have for each one of them is. Um, but uh, Zeus is, really has some really cool options when it comes to have, and Nino Valley has one as well, but they have one that's a fan, fan and a light. And then in the other port or the other spot, I can put a, like a remote. So I can do a scene selector, which I think is really nice. I would like to do that in the living room and in like at least the master bedroom and game room. I think that would be really cool to be able to, you know, one switch is your fan and your light and the other switch is, you know, your mood settings like, uh, me, you know, watching a movie now or um, going to bed or something like that, which I think would be cool. Um, here, I'm so far behind. Holy crap. Uh, you have six ubiqu ubiquity APs plus 20 plus cameras from Unify. Love the ecosystem. That's amazing, dude. That's amazing. Their, their cameras are expensive, though. I've been, I looked at them. Jeez. Um, but I, I, I've heard they're good, though. And I mean, the whole ecosystem altogether, that would be ideal. That would be awesome. Hello from Belgium. First time here. Too many APs is not a good idea. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep them. Right. I think four or five. One outside. And then four on each corners of the house, two downstairs and two upstairs. What do you think about that? Thank you, David. Um, start with a couple and expand with needed. Yeah, the problem is, is I need to at least wire cable. So like, regardless if I go with four or not, I need at least to run the wires to the downstairs at least. Um, so I'll probably definitely run wireless AP to the ceiling in the, uh, what did I say, the master bedroom. Or no, the dining room. Or did I say master bedroom and the study? I'll definitely put a wireless AP there. Uh, those two spots, and then uh, maybe one upstairs for now, and see what see what that's like. Because I can do more upstairs later. Just getting in the attic or having an electrician run it should, shouldn't be that fun. It shouldn't be that hard or expensive. Um, Unified Design Center. Yes, I was actually going to pull that up and maybe plan out a plan out one of my upstairs or something like that and see on this stream but uh how long we've we been streaming and i haven't done anything you guys have just been awesome i don't know, like you're doing all the work here i'm not doing anything I'm looking at my screen amazing um i have three and 200 square foot single floor 2000 square foot single floor and it is more than enough concrete here over here oh, okay so yeah concrete you definitely need more for sure Outside, holiday light strips, lights and cameras on the four corners of the house, um, on the driveway, and in the garage. Um, doors, pool, jacuzzi, mailbox insert. Yeah, those are all really good points. I'm actually going to take that, copy that message, and paste it here in my notes. Thank you, Josh. That's, that's amazing. Uh, so one thing is, and let me, let me move to my... Here. Okay. So I, I built this last night. Right. So this is how it's going to be laid out. Planning, I think I'm going to have on each four corners, I'm going to have a Ethernet cable ran so that um, I can install a camera looking. So I'll have, a, I'll, have a, I'll have a doorbell camera. And then I'm thinking about installing one on the side of the garage, on this third car garage here, and pointing it towards the camera right now. So it'd be pointed at where, where we're at. Um, so to get everything except for maybe this little dead area next to the study here at the bottom. But the, the doorbell camera should get coming, you know, everything out here. This is going to be a porch, this outside here. So that should be, I think that should be enough for the front. And then on the back, I want to get two here, so one probably here on this side looking towards the camera here. I'm planning on putting one on each four of the corners, and I want to be able to see maybe five, because I want to be able to see each side of the house, so both sides, and then the backyard and the front. I want to make sure I have enough for that. Um, and Ubiquity actually has a Good planning system for that in their design center. So I think I'll do that as well. At least, I mean, even if I don't go with them, I can use their planning system to see where it would where it would work. 
Um, I don't know if you do floor insulation in Austin, but it's based on aluminum with the problems with the Wi-Fi coverage. Yeah. Um, I don't think so in floor. I don't know. Probably. Uh, I'm doing so up the upstairs is actually getting extra insulation. It's getting full sound insulation up the upstairs. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to affect it, but we will see. Ubiquity for the wind. You can put them in the floor plan and online system and draw. Yes, I do want to do that on the stream, actually. Uh, just remember to set them in the ceiling, not on the wall. Yes, definitely on the ceiling. Definitely on the ceiling. You can buy more if needed. Yes. Oh, my God. This chat just moved more. I just found that I have so much more chat to read. When was this message even sent? Probably five minutes ago. Make sure you have plenty of room left in your sub panel to add breakers in the future. Ours was already full, so we would have to add an extra panel. Okay, actually, that's a good idea. Make sure extra spots in electrical panel. Okay, good idea. Um, Travis, that's why I wanted to talk to you. <laughs> um, security system. Okay, so one thing. I need your opinion on this. It's kind of, I don't have an option. I asked. I don't really have an option. They're giving me alarm.com sensors and alarm system. So they're doing all of my, they're uh, like included wiring every single one of my windows and doors on the outside for sensors. So contact sensors. So if it opens, I'll know about it. It's alarm.com. I've never used alarm.com. I researched it. It doesn't seem like it has a really good integration with home assistant but it does seem like i'm getting a z-wave version of this i don't know if i can connect that to home assistant or not have you guys used the z-wave version of alarm.com let me know i i have no idea about it i've tried to research it and came up with basically nothing um so that would be incredible to hear if you have any thoughts about that um, um let's see here so yeah, security system with all interior, exterior doors, and motion. So I get like one motion sensor in the living room, I think, which is probably going to go in one of these corners here and just look at the living room. I don't know why it's just one. And they said that I couldn't add more and I, don't, I literally don't know why, but it is a hardwired motion sensor. I have other motion sensors, um, but I want to get motion sensors in the future to, to add, but Garage lighting is important for me, at least. I would have to add, have have them add, run at least four more boxes to fixtures to the garage. Okay, um, Travis, I do get in the garage. I get, oh, I mean, I only get two fluorescent lights. So I'm guessing that's the big long lights, and they're going in the garage. Two in the garage. Um, I probably not enough. Uh, maybe we can talk about where to add more and see how expensive that is to add now. I mean, I know I can add something later. So if it is, you know, super expensive, then I may not do it. But we can, we'll we can talk about that for sure. I think that's important. Yeah, yeah. Now, first of all, I hear you want the home assistant, and you want to go. You want a pro AV tech to install. That is not a combination that happens. No. So the idea. I don't want home assistant. I don't want the AV company to install home assistant. I want the AV company to install the wires and the guts of this so that I can use what they give me inside of home assistant. And you know, that, that means these motion sensors from alarm.com, hopefully um, the contact sensors and everything else that goes in Honeywell, the, and then I'm getting Slage, quick connect. What, how do you say that brand Slage um, locks? And I don't know there's Z wave apparently as well. So I think they'll work but I'm not 100% sure. <clears throat> I have a mix of Zigbee, Ikea, U, uh, a mix of Zigbee, Ikea, U, and Sonoff. It works great. Yes. I So right now I have like, I have Wise, which is not a good choice, but um, I have Z-Wave light switches. I have Hue light bulbs. Um, I have, I have a ton of different stuff everywhere. It's crazy. I like Innovelli and Shelly. I also thought about Shelly, but I, I kind of want the I want the feel of a electric or a, a smart switch. I like the way they look. Some of them have little lights on them, and I, you know, it just makes it. I feel like it makes it look more smart. Almost, I don't know why, but it just looks better in my opinion. Um, if you want to decorate for Xmas outside, 
and the eaves would be amazing. Yes, I actually have that on my notes as well um, to, to add outlets to the eaves. Apparently, I'm super behind. How's it going, Raspy? Um, Home Assistant is a consumer product. Pro AVs do not understand. Yes, yes. I, I do know this. Um, I help build Home Assistant. Um, not the core of it, but uh, um, the front end. But uh, Decorate Xmas. Yes, I want at least one. So they only gave me two outside outlets. How does that even work? I got one on the back porch and one on the front porch. What? So I'm, I'm having them add one on the right side of the porch here. And then I also want one that we have a big eave up here. I want one in the eave. And then probably something around back area. I don't know where, though, to put those. Um, David said, best thing to do is electrician to stall Cat 6A, not Cat 6. Okay. Um, that, so they so you can get 10 gigabyte speeds with Cat 6, just not over 165 feet or 55 meters. At least that's what I thought. Suggest even installing four Cat 6s in each room. Two for computers and network enabled video devices. Yes. Plan is to get four in our offices at least. The goal would be six, but four in least, and then two drops in every other room that I want. Um, and then three to every TV um, and a few other places. Dog. Um, hello from Portugal. How's it going? Um, best thing to do is have an electrician call. Okay, uh, I read that. And Two for any HD based uh, T devices. Do not send RG6 to every room. No reason for RG6 anymore. Have your racks in the same room, maybe basement. Point for your service. Let's say, so David, so don't do RG6 anymore? You don't think so? I mean, like, what if somebody wants cable in the future? Like, how are they going to get it? I feel like, for, like, if somebody came in and I was buying a house and didn't have cable, like, if I wanted cable, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I know, I know what you mean because the future is not cable, but yeah. I mean, can you do. Can you do that through Ethernet? Is that possible? I don't even know. If you go with Unify Protect, you can get you can use your cameras as motion detector and home assistant. That's awesome. No basement, unfortunately. Yes. But I don't have a basement. Just downstairs and upstairs in an attic. Which I don't have like full attic access. It's just it's kind of an attic. Uh, what did you use to make this? So this is floorplanner.com. Um you can uh, pull in your your plans and then make a scale and then um, just kind of build out the walls and build out some furniture stuff. Um, so, I mean, like this is not the furniture that we will be adding, but this is just kind of mock furniture. We also have a little dog shower here, which is nice. Uh, but it is some really nice software. If you want a different software, um, there is something called Sweet Home 3D. Um, it costs to get all the features um, and this one does too, but um, it is pretty nice. This one has a better interface, in my opinion, floorplanner.com. Uh, what program did you use as 3D model? Floorplanner.com. Then in install tuners such as HD Home Run in this location to send your channels over the network. Okay. Yeah, that's the plan. So that, I think that's the plan, is be able to do that upstairs in my office and send um, TV and you know, if I got a Roku or anything through HDMI to the TVs, but from the network rack. Running your TV... If you have other video sources you want to send over TV, like VCR, DVD, then you can think of those when you send. Okay, yep, that sounds good. That sounds a good idea. So floor planner is the 3D model. Um, in a live session for the 3D view, yes. Um, I, I can do a 3D view in my sec uh, upstairs. I was actually planning on doing that if we had time, um, and show you how it's done. Uh, but take a look. Uh, Maybe I'll just make a video on it. And I also plan on making a video on dashboard and how to build a dashboard, Lovelace dashboard, using your floor plan. So I think that's going to be a good one. Stay tuned for that. Um, since you're building new house, you might want to install the Lotron low voltage lighting, which has low voltage cables and the control system, same room as a network rack. And your high voltage 120 goes to the control rack for your electrician panel. Okay. I don't know. If, do I want to go Lutron? I've heard Lutron's good. But I don't know. I heard it's expensive. I don't know how much it is, but I've heard it, I heard it could be expensive. Can be expensive. Um, which only requires POE over the Ethernet cable to the light source. You really need to figure out your lighting for your electrical meeting. Yes, yes. So I have like today to figure out my electrical 
Um, no, I guess not to day to figure out the electrical. I have to day to figure out any structural changes that I want to make extra because they're sending back the, this plan to the architect today. And then I'm going to, um, and then I get my low voltage meeting later. So electrical, I don't really have a meeting for the electrical. It is weird, but I, I don't have a specific meeting for that. Um, mm -hmm. use the sensors, but replace main unit with ESP2. You th okay, that's what I was going to ask. I can do that with alarm.com. You think like with the home system, I was like, I don't care to gut the whole system. They're, they're guts of the brain and just toss it as long as I can put it into home assistant because the home assistant kind of drives everything. I don't want alarm.com to drive everything, especially since I think they're just cloud-based only. Uh, I think they do have an option. Actually, I looked that up, but I, I would rather just use it inside of home assistant. What brands of sensors and hubs are you planning to use? No idea. Alarm.com is giving me contact sensors for all the outside doors. And then I'm also, unfortunately, guys, I know they're giving me my Q garage door openers. I tried to get them just to remove the garage door openers and say, give me the money that you're going to be using that back. Even if it's like a hundred dollars, I don't care. Don't put my Q in my house. And they they have to. Apparently they have a contract with my Q and they have to put it in my house. So the first thing I'm doing is immediately turning that into a relay sensor because my Q is terrible. So it actually talks about completely removing my Q from Home Assistant because it's so bad. It, it just never works because they keep breaking everything. They're probably going to shut down the whole API eventually anyway. So, um, What brand of sensors? Uh, yeah, I don't know yet. What do you guys think? Brands of, like, I want motion sensors and I want, um, and, and like, I want to use Home Assistant as a main hub and use mostly Z-Wave and Zigbee. What should I, what, what different sensors and stuff should I get? Never too late to start planning those. Yes, for sure. Uh, I think Paul Hibbert may have just been triggered. <laughs> oh, the Zigbee. <laughs> Absolutely. I almost hang. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Hey, I hate extension cords. It'd be great not to have those. Um, so many cool ideas and input. Hopefully your follow up video with all your decision. Yes. Yes. That, I mean, yes, that's the plan is to use this stream as thank you for helping me and then put out a video to, to discuss what I actually went through and what I did. Um, I did like Smart Home Solver's video about what he did, but I think I want to go more in depth. And I think he's going to come out with more in depth videos, but with the whole wiring, I want to go in more in depth. So if you do, if you want that, let me know. Um, I think that'll be cool, a cool idea. Um, thank you guys for sticking around. I know that all I'm literally doing is answering questions and asking questions, but you guys are amazing. Um, if you're building a home and install wired sensors, not Zigbee or Z-Wave sensors, and don't worry about the brand as long as there's... Yeah. The idea... So I have... I The wired contact sensors are going to be everywhere. But I don't know... So and I want the shades as well. I want I want to power shades. I'm going to have Ethernet drop to my sliding door here and probably my master bedroom shades. I have those uh, automatic. And maybe the dining room as well. Um, those are like the main ones I want to make sure I have shades for if I can. So I think that's three, four, five, six, seven ish. It drops just for shades. Um, so I think that would be, that'd be cool. Um, if you're building a home, yeah, all good, David, you're, you're doing amazing. I mean, you're helping me out a lot. Um, best thing to consider is probably local or cloud connect. The future proof of devices. I mean, you don't want to replace stuff in the future. Yes. I don't, I would rather have local. I'm not, so I'm not opposed to having stuff on the cloud. I mean, I know it's not the best solution, but sometimes it's, it's the better solution for the approval factor of my wife um, because sometimes it just better interfaces or better connectivity. And with that being said, if I can just do all wired, That'd be the ideal, but I also don't have unlimited money for wires, um, which would be nice. But low voltage lightning. God, I keep scrolling too far. Low voltage lighting sounds like a cool idea. What about heating and how to cool your house? Maybe come on late to here. Uh, so I, I'm getting Honeywell um, from the from the house or from the builder. 
again, I couldn't change that as well. I actually wanted to for them to let me just take that money and use it somewhere else as well. But I can't. They're putting in Honeywell. Apparently it's Z-Wave, and it, if, if it is Z-Wave and it works, and the interface on the actual thermostat is not terrible, then I may just keep it. The plan was to actually go Ecobi, e which I know is Wi-Fi, but it was to go Ecobi. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. How's it going, Madison? Good. I do. Yes. Um, if your electrician and your AT techs are not wanting to work with you, then find one that will. Yeah. Um, they, they, I think they're going to work with me. So the electrical company and the AV company are actually going to, they're actually brothers. So the people who own them. Are actually brothers they're in the same family so apparently they work really nicely together because both of them know each other um so they'll they'll send me schematics later whenever i do my av to the electrical company and say hey he needs <clears throat> he needs an outlet here he needs a tv outlet here since i'm going to be running tv there i need a extra outlet for my network rack because of that so he'll send that information over which is good but i don't really get a choice I'm, it's not a custom build you want one that realizes you know what you want and they will help guess. So, so far from just talking to the salesman, who's of course his salesman, who's going to be nice, but he's, he's a really cool dude. Um, but he seems like they, like he knows that they're going to help me out and letting me do basically whatever I want um, when it comes to it. I mean, this builder allows you to do so much more than a lot of other builders do, especially since it's not custom. Um, so it should be, I should have the ability. You, you want one that realizes you. Okay. Um, make sure you have good service coming in for amps. If you're, and you're thinking of a lot of devices. Yes, for sure. Uh, I would not go Lutron as it can't be switched out for smart switches later. Exactly. That's, that's the, idea. yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, That's just stupid of them. It's your house. You should be able to choose what you want for your door window sensors to be, which garage. Yeah. I mean, while it's my house, it's not fully custom. It's not like I went to a, you know, I pulled a builder. I pulled my own plot of land. I, it's the builder or this plot of land. They have, you know, because it's not fully custom, they have things that they can do you know, that they can say that you have to do this way. And we've talked to other builders that actually give us less freedom than this builder is. Um, this builder is actually letting us change the floor plan, and we actually added this this big ass mud room here instead of uh, a third car tandem garage that is useless. Uh, we added a third car over here and made this whole section a mud room. Um, they're they're allowing us to do a lot, so I think that because it's not custom, this is the perfect builder to allow me to do as much as I can. Since they're in contract with these people, whatever. I can always change it out later. It wasn't that big of a worry for me as, as long as I could change it out later. And it is my house after they give it to me, but I could change whatever I want. Lutron is more expensive, but smart, but it's smart at the control system, not at the switch of the room. Yeah. If the electrician will not install the garage door, you can we'll go with electrician. electrician. Yeah. Again, it's not fully custom. Fortunately, you can integrate my queue into home assist. You can, if, but it will go down every other day. That's the problem. Is it's constantly down. Um, I like the Hunter Douglas motorized shades I see in homes all the time. I know they automated, but I don't know what they can be integrated with. Yeah. Um, I think as long as I get power to them, I can just send back and forth the data. I think I'm, I'm going to get an Ethernet drop to them, and then as long as I have that, I can add in whatever controller that I want that will power those. Um, so I think the shade doesn't only matter if it's smart or not. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Let me know. I, it may, it may need to be a smart. I'm not sure. Ever heard of Dr. Z's talks about his, his whole house attic fan that physically 
opens windows to suck in outside air for those transitions and seasons. Really? No, I've never heard of that. Dr. Z's man, he um he does some crazy stuff. I mean, like he has some cool projects and he's very advanced in in what he can do and like being just handy. I I'm not very handy, unfortunately. I can do electrical stuff, kind of, but when it comes to like building stuff and and all this crazy stuff that he does, he's I mean, it's amazing. Sounds awesome, but here in Texas, the transition between cold and literally on fire is about one week of the year. Yeah, yeah. You say your electrician is working with you, but being told no, must install my queue, must install one outlet. No, they're not saying you must install one outlet outside. They did so. The builder, it's not the electrician, it's the builder that's saying that I can't not use my queue. It's because the builder has contracts with, um, with my queue or with uh, whatever that company is uh, it's behind my queue. And because it's not a fully custom home, again, I can't customize everything. They're allowing me to customize a lot, being not a custom home. Um, it is like a, you know, I pick the floor plan, then I might be able to update the floor plan type of thing where, and, and I'm in a community, I'm in a neighborhood community where most of the houses are like, they have to be the same. Um, so it, it's that kind of field. It's not a crazy, um, crazy place. And it's not a crazy custom thing. So, uh, hey, Thomas, how's it going, man? I mean, uh, so what's going on is I, people are awesome and they're answering and, and telling me so much more than I, I thought. I, I thought I had a good plan, man. I thought I had it all figured it out. And then the, everyone's so much smarter than me. Madison has joined the chat. Um, yeah, Madison, she, he is a mod. I, I just made a mod. I, didn't, I had no mods before this. Um, Hey guys, thanks for running the stream. Or thanks for running the stream, Zach. I'm ju I'm just planning on a full refurbishment of the house in UK, and this is great information. Ask what benefits of wired sensors. Wired sensors mean that you never have to change the battery. For example, one of the biggest things, and this may happen to other sensors later, um, is if they're battery powered and they die, you could lose that MAC address, and that basically makes the sensor unusable after that. Um, so. When it comes to being able to to use wired, they're always going to be powered. You never have to worry about it. Um, and I also eventually plan on putting a backup generator um, in my network rack, so that not a, like a battery backup, basically, it's not a generator, but a battery backup, um, so that you know even if somebody cuts my power, I'll still have those sensors and they'll still be available because I will have local control um, over that. Yes. I made you mod, Madison. I'm just baiting on using wired contact sensors or Shelly. Shelly's not a bad idea. I've heard really good things about Shelly. I don't think you could go wrong. If you're refurbishing, wired sensors are probably going to be better. I mean, again, I'm not an expert, but I think it's going to be better in the long run because you're not using um, batteries. Batteries can go dead. They can go dead. You know, you have to make sure you keep on track of them and make sure you get notifications whenever they're going dead, stuff like that. In a new house, install wired sensors, not wireless. You can hack wireless sensors and not wired. Yeah, I mean, the pro so the thing is, is like, I'm not, I'm not too worried about getting hacked or all this other stuff. Like, I'm not worth it for people to take that much time out of their day to hack my network. It's just not going to happen. The breaking in and cutting my power that's a worry i mean then that would be battery would continue to work as long as you have that on your local network there's you know as long as you have a battery backup for the wired ones it should be fine but there are some you know good and bad things for both uh, but don't need um okay you can hack uh, which ones do you choose which ones to choose for wired sensors pir humidity temperature light yeah dude um uh, i don't know I've I've heard, uh, what is it, Aquara, Xiaomi, those, um, off of AliExpress are fine. They work. I really love to find someone not China related. I mean, they're fine. That would um, that have good sensors that I can use via Z-Wave or even Zigbee. I wouldn't be opposed to Zigbee. Um, 
but yeah, so I have um, Aquara buttons. I have this button here. I use all the time to turn on my lights. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's just a very tiny button. Works really good. Um, and then I also have a temperature sensor in my bathroom. I haven't actually connected it yet to actually do anything, but I do have one and it does seem to work. Um, it is, hasn't lost any connection. So I would, I mean, uh, uh, I can never say the word, but Aquara, Aquara, Xiaomi. Look it up on AliExpress. Look it up on Home Assistant Discord. They have, you know, uh, Ava. There's a lot of talk about those. Don't need alarm system, just the sensors. Yes, all sensors when in building should be wired. For retrofit, it's easier to install wireless. Yes. All these awesome ideas. I'm here receiving Mocha adapters to try and make my house usable. Yeah, you need that Reno someone's talking about, Travis, uh, <laughs> um, to just completely rewire your whole house. Uh, see here, I'm over here just receiving the Mocha adapter. Floor plan, export 3D with a half wall. Like you mean like half wall here? I don't know. I know you can make them half walls. So if I go 2D, click, I can raise from the floor here and um, change the height. So like did that, if we go down my 3D, it should look a little different. So now it's like half wall there. They're, the way that they connect the walls and make a ceiling is really weird whenever you do a half wall. Um, but can't do it. Change that back. Zero. Okay. Um, any options or interest in solar? Yes, I'm interested in solar. I don't think we want to go for it immediately, but I've, I've been meaning to look up. I'm going to put that in my notes, Travis, to look up what I need to do to get ready for solar. Solar panel. Um, there are also water control valves that can connect to a source and then be shut off through home assistant. Yeah, I've heard uh, this, like there's some Z-Wave ones on the smartest house. They have some that are available and they have been looking into those. If you go Tesla or Tesla's solar roof, uh, since you're building, yes. Um, I plan, so I am going to be, there's a few things I already have in my notes um, to, to, to do. Actually, there's a lot that I have in my notes to do. And one of them is to add a 20, uh, 220 volt outlet for um, charging a electric car later. Uh, we don't know if we're going to get them or not, but I want to have the ability to do that and not have to run that later. Um, so I think, uh, I think we are going to do that for sure. Okay, so I think I finally made it to the end of the chat. Amazing. I think probably missed a few, and I apologize. But um, see, awesome. Thanks for answering, Zach. Um, how will wired link to Home Assistant? I looked at connected, but not really sure. Thanks again. Um, to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> I I feel like you can probably um. I think somebody said ESP thirty two. You can do those. Um, but I I feel like they have connectors that will that integrate into Home Assistant pretty easily. I haven't looked them up. I just know wired is better. And even if I didn't have them. Is like even if I had to start with them not connected in a home assistant, that would be technically fine. I can deal with that, but I want them to be connected to home assistant. If I have to, you know, buy something that someone already built or build my own ESP2, then I'm okay with that. What's the name of this planner? It is floorplanner.com. And there's a free version. Uh, I didn't pay for anything that I've done here so far. Um, they you're able to draw walls, rooms, services. So I made my um my floors. Um, you're able to do doors, tons of different options here. Like they just, uh, I mean, I guess there's not that many doors, but whenever we come to structures, a lot of stuff here. And then if you go to this other section up at the top, you guys can't see any of that, man. Gosh. Um, uh, but if you, if you look up at the top, can I change? Can I just go out of studio mode really quickly? Move myself over here. So. Rooms, walls, services, doors, windows, and structures. And then you're able to do actual furniture, um, which is cool. And you're able to do multiple floors and 
here's like my whole plan downstairs looks like it's going to be 24 uh, 100 square feet it seems like a little bit much so it may not be perfect but maybe not oh that includes the garage which is not included in the in gosh dang it man coming with irrigation yes it is coming with some irrigation i actually i need to figure out an irrigation i need to figure out where they're actually running that it does come with sprinklers i know that much but i need to hook them up to be smart i wonder how i do that i i, I think i can figure that out later i think that if they come with con sprinklers they come with the connections that they need to be smart i just need the the hub to make it smart uh floor planner is the name okay. yes floor planner is great um there's also another option that is more of an application on your computer and it's called floor planner sweet home 3d it's called not floor planner. It's called Sweet Home 3D. Um, the install cameras facing outside, one direction, like clockwise around the house, and that covers the backside of the next camera. Yes. Yeah, so I think the plan for cameras would be um, to have one on the third car garage, looking at me. So looking at the camera that you can see. Um. Then putting one on this corner to look at this side of the house. And one on this corner. Actually, let me put one on this corner here to look at the back side of the house. And then I'm, I think I'm going to have one in this little divot of, like above the door. Looking, you know, out. Maybe I'll do it in the middle. Would that be better? Not sure. Um, and then I'm one, one looking at the other side of the house. So uh, cameras are very important to me. I think I'm going to have four to five cameras, maybe more looking around the house. Um, I want them to be, you know, in VR, POE type of stuff. I don't want, I don't want to do any wireless, all wired, all ready to go, all 24 seven recording. Um, Dr. Z's will be, soon be releasing a video for a wired alarm system. He's building an Arduino and integrating that. That'd be, that'd be awesome. If if he's doing that, it's all wired alarm system, then I already have the wired stuff ready. Then all I have to do is gut the alarm.com and put the Arduino in for what he does. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, if you're not subscribed to Dr. Z's, I mean, Jesus. He comes up with the craziest stuff, man. Craziest stuff. Uh, I have a ratio irrigation controller. Very simple. I've heard of ratio. I've heard of that. And I heard a lot of people do like that. Oh, that is... a Probably my my first my top choice right now. Even Travis here is good things. You know, that's good. The irrigation will connect to a irrigation controller at your outside water source. Yep. That's the that's that's the plan then. Definitely would recommend staying away from Ubiquity cameras if you can. Wi-Fi is decent. Mm, yeah, Ubiquity cameras are expensive, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think I'll go with Ubiquity. Seems to be the best um, that people have. But uh, I'll, I'll see. I'm going to take a look at my options. Um, mm, yeah, no, I know. I, I, so... I'm testing out a few of them right now. Um, testing out real link, testing out and, and key. Um, and then I have a few others I'm going to test out to, uh, and I'll actually have reviews coming up on the video, on the, on the, on the channel for real link. Um, and for and key, their 4k, um, color camera is coming out. Um, so that's nice. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to, um, review that as well. See you. See what they are. Ubiquity is great, and wireless and have the Wi-Fi six. Yeah, Wi-Fi six is not. I mean, I can just uh, change over the wireless wireless APs. I'm not too worried about getting Wi-Fi six now. One, it's not standard, and two, it's very um, heavy. Mm. But it is going to be something standard very soon. So I want to be able to have the ability to do it, and Ubiquity does have that ability. I don't think it's perfect yet. I think it still needs some work. Um, 
before like Wi-Fi 6 is ready. And it's, it, it's not standard yet. And I don't think it's technically necessary yet. Especially if I have most of my stuff wired. Then that'll be the ideal. <clears throat> okay. So, now my throat hurts because I talk so much. Fine. Um, okay, so just, I want to go over real quick here. So this is the diagram of the outlets and light switches. So, um, yes, you can see like here. Very random, but not related. A home assistant for cars like to change the location to car when near phone, Raspberry Pi, Bluetooth, I decided. it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, man. Um, I think that I, I'm not sure. I have never done that, but I think that would be a cool idea. Um, maybe a, um, maybe a tag reader of some sort in your car that if you, if you touch it, then, um, then it would tell you or tell home assistant that you're in your car. Um, Thomas, yes, that's exactly. I told, I told, I said that to uh, Madison last night. It's like, oh, we're we're getting a COVID patio. <laughs> I thought the same thing. Um, the cameras are expensive, but it, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind it if everything else was solid. But you shouldn't see how they end of life their old camera system and almost zero warning. Yeah. Yeah, I the plan was not to go with, with uh, ubiquity cameras, but well, I'll see. I I haven't done the full research I want to do yet on them, but I mean, um, I'll I'll definitely look into it um, and to see you know what other people think. And clearly, I mean they're not the best from everyone else, but um, I I think I'm I'm definitely going over going to other brands on cameras. But ubiquity as a networking. How much money are people charged for a single Cat Six? I'm being told one thirty on my end. So it depends. Are you doing new construction um, or Reno where the walls are open, or are you doing um, you know closed walls where you have to push it down through um, through the wall through the insulation? Uh, I'm being told around sixty to seventy dollars, or sixty to eighty dollars for a run. Um, from my electrician or my uh, low voltage AV company. Um, and I've heard up to a hundred dollars is really standard. It can be more in different places, but I feel like that 70 to a hundred dollar range is, is the most standard. Then for seven, to buy a hardware solution when they previously provided. Wow. That kind of sucks. That's, that, that is pretty, pretty crappy. I got some cameras from Reeling for testing and making a video like them but we're surprised that my old or heek of heek vision hike vision i i also am looking at hike vision or however you say those uh can perform much better at night real link switches are switches to black and white very fast yeah they do but I, I still feel like i have good clarity at night even if it's black and white from the real link so far um i haven't compared them to much other than wise and wise is not good at all um so um uh, yeah i i'm so i'm I have an and key that I'm going to be testing really soon. Um, so I'll see how they are comparatively. Um, but I think Heek Vision is another good alternative for sure. If you have a Quest 2 playing wirelessly from your PC, you will want Wi-Fi 6. I do not have a Quest. I've not done any type of VR before yet. But, um, but yeah. I, I think VR is really cool. Ian from, our, from the front end devs does a lot of VR. New construction where where are you living at, Nicholas? Are you in the U.S. or in the U.K.? I don't know about U.K. If, but I guess you put it in dollars, so probably U.S. But walls go up; it's cheaper than after for cat six. Yes, for any wires, really. Minnesota, okay. I mean, if you have the option to maybe get another quote from a different electrician or low voltage AV company, then try. If you're doing something like I am, and you're kind of held into that held into that AV company you can't really change, then, I mean, kind of, it's just the way it works almost. 
If you plan new, I can recommend a Samsung a frame for displaying good information. I do that as well. Good night from Insel. What do you mean a Samsung for the frame? Big Vision is good cams, but the Chinese company and U.S. government says they're stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you guys think about smart or or tablet panels? Um, I want to have pa panels, and I want to wire for panels. But should I just go with like a random tablet? I, I want to get something a little bit more powerful than a fire. Or should I just go with a random tablet and put something around it? Or is there a better version of a like in wall frame as the TV? Okay, gotcha. TV. Um, should I put? Are there dedicated tablets for like in wall tablets? Um, because I know I can retrofit you know ones into my current house and that'd be fine. But are there? Certain ones that are better if I wire it for electricity and stuff and stuff, would it be better to use a different type of tab tablet or is you know is the iPad or a different tablet the best option? Um Okay. Okay. iPads are expensive. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean that's kind of what I was thinking. It didn't I looked around and it doesn't seem to be very good options for dedicated and since I'm using Home Assistant, it would be just needed to be a web browser anyway. Um, so that makes sense. Wired Ethernet. Yep, that's the plan. That would be the plan. Probably probably need two. No, I would just need one. Maybe. I embedded small displays from IT into the wall switches. Looks uh, good. But they're small. Yeah. I want like 10 inches on some of them, I think. I think if I get them, I'll probably just have two. One as you come in to the house, and then one as you go up the stairs. Control, control through Persona Basic, maybe the Lenovo, Google Assistant tablets, they have a dock. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Home audio is something else I wanted to talk about is they don't wire any audio in the house. Um, I could have them wire um, speakers and audio around the house. Apparently they have, a, they have an entertainment package. I could do, uh, but I don't even know where to put them. I mean, I kind of want some outside. Do I go with their speakers that are like in the ceiling or do I wait and just buy my own speakers and have them wire them for speakers? I don't know for sure what the best option is. Yeah. I'm also thinking maybe getting it's gonna be turned, but maybe getting speakers wired for a TV for my TV in the game room and like having a subwoofer wired somewhere. Yeah, I'll definitely ask them. I just haven't gotten to that point yet where we've had that meeting with them. Do you guys even see where I just put? Um yeah, I definitely, I don't know how much it's going to cost, though, for AV. I'll, I'll have to see. So the reason I'm not too, if, if it's expensive, uh, well, the reason why I don't know if I want to go with speakers and wired audio is that I have Google Home and I have, you know, those options. But I know the quality can be much better using a full audio system and then I have the option to send audio from, from my rack through to the TV. So that can also be done with via HDMI, or Ethernet. Um, you can embed a Google or Alexa hub into the wall. Uh, but they change device form factors too much for me to put in a wall. Yep, agree. Alternative solution would be a Raspberry Pi with display. Hey, Google, thanks. Google's talking to me again. Then you could wire proximity sensors to auto turn on and off the display. Yes. I think that would be a pretty important or just have it always on. I'm not sure. Uh, hey, everyone joining from Moscow. We are designing our new home in Bangkok. This is super timely as we are just going through this review on our current plans. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Be sure if you're just joining, be sure to um, to, to rewatch this. It, it goes live a few hours after I finish this stream. Um, but it will go live and you can look at it. And then I'm also going to 
um, put together like a, once we're finished, once I go to all these different places and got to put together a video of what I actually did. And then also, if you guys want, let me know. I think I'm just going to do like a full process of the whole home building um, and making sure it's smart and everything process of like it being built, what we had to go through, you know, looking at the wires when it's just the frame and all this other stuff. Um, um, I think that would be a cool, cool videos. Um, see here. You could put the wire in the ceiling for speakers, even if you don't punch the hole in the ceiling. Yes, I have to see. Okay. Take pictures and measure where you left. Are. Yes, that is important. That's something I want to uh, like um, put up as a video as well as the process I took to taking pictures and taking videos and, and laying out, hey, this is the master bedroom. Here's an outlet. Here's an outlet. Here's a... You know, here's wires. Here's where I wired Ethernet. Um, everything. Yep. A buddy of mine is from Dallas. Just sent you a photo. A buddy of mine from Dallas just sent a photo of what it looks like. Maybe we should. Maybe we should ask you what you what really coming down in Austin looks like because it's not. In a, let me let me look. What it looks like now. In the the roads aren't covered anymore but it is pretty intense let me see if i can pull up a photo i, I took a photo earlier but now it's even worse but like i mean you gotta agree that's pretty that's i mean that's a good amount of snow right i mean yeah it's just kind of a dusting right now but i mean it's accumulating that was within maybe an hour maybe less like, that is not that long of time. I mean, that's a lot of snow, especially in Texas, man. Um. Okay, we're going to fully document and 3D model the house when done. Nice. Travis is a photographer, a real estate photographer. So um, uh, I told him I was going to cash in some friend privileges. <laughs> And have him take or like 3D model a house, which I think would be cool. Maybe I could put that up. I think can you do that in YouTube? Like have um like 3D uh, cameras in YouTube? I don't know. I've wired speakers did like 15 years ago, but it makes a huge chunk of tables when it comes back to the receiver. I'd go wireless if I did it today. Really, really okay. That's interesting. That you that you would go wireless. I I, I feel like that's a very different opinion. I mean, not saying that your opinion is wrong or anything. I just think that's such a different opinion than I've heard everyone else say. So that is interesting. I'd be curious to why you say that other than the big chunk of cables. Make sure you have a small cover of the speaker in the wireless. Yep. I'm behind your live stream, but you want a camera on each side of your garage crossing each other. Yeah. That's true. I, I want more cameras than I probably need. You're probably, probably not wrong. Um, no speakers are great, no wires, unless you have higher demands, of course, for your audio. I mean, I like audio, but I don't know if I have, um, yeah, 3D models a little much there, Travis. You're right. A walkthrough like you do in your other houses. Pretty cool. Um, unless you have higher demands for, I don't really, I mean, I like audio, but I, I don't have like, I'm not an audiophile, right? So I'm not that worried about it. Um, I don't know. And I don't want them to look bad too. So. Yes, you can. I'm guessing you mean for the 3D video. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Wire management. Too much lightning on wire, wire management. Yeah, I, I mean, like, the idea would be coming to a patch panel and then into a rack. Um, So the place where I'm thinking about... So this is my first floor, right? The two options... that are, I have three options for placing my network rack in the patch panel and everything. There's a closet here underneath the stairs. I think this is my least favorite option because it's hard to get to. And then it's also kind of the coat closet and I don't want, and I need ventilation to it. So it's not that great of an option. The other option would be here in the storage um, of the study. You could put it in here, um, have a full rack. It wouldn't be that, too, that big of a deal. The other option 
and let me change the rotating would be in my office so, so bedroom three here but if you put it in this closet um, and I would try and make sure that they have ventilation in each one of these would make sure for that um, what do you guys think I I, I wanted to Study storage would be impact resale the least. Yeah, so that's what Madison was saying too. Like resale value, you don't want it in a bedroom. Um, you don't want it in your thing. It's a, but the study problem is like I would really wish I could have it upstairs. If I do it downstairs, then I need probably like a what do you guys think? A three inch conduit from from that location all the way to the upstairs to the attic so that I could do extra stuff in the future. I don't know. <clears throat> but I, I agree, Travis, that study is probably the best option when it comes to reselling because if then everything's in the network rack and then this, I resell this to, you know, a, a four or a four child family or whatever, and they go to the closet and like this kid just has all the network stuff in their closet. Um, can it just go in the attic? Technically it could, but it, it gets hot up there. Um, and then it's hard to get to. And, um, unless we have, we somehow, finished up the attic somehow and like made a room, a small, small room up there. But I'd put a mini split in the wire closet. If you have a basement, pull it there. If not, put it on the second floor, second closet room. Thanks, me. Thanks. Um, can I just go in the attic? The problem is, is like, I would rather do it upstairs. Like upstairs just seems much easier to me. But make sure you've got an empty electrical hoses from every room to your main room where everything comes in together. Yes, that is the idea is to get a lot of conduit. Conduit from, especially downstairs. Like if I'm putting it, if I'm, any, any, regardless of where I put the network closet, a lot of conduit downstairs because it's harder to do it downstairs. You know, more runs downstairs than it is upstairs. So Downstairs, I would put conduit in the study, in the bedroom, in the master bedroom. Um, I would put one to the um, to the TV in the living room, um, and then conduit to the study. I think I said that, and then probably conduit to the garage as well. I would run fiber from the lower level network rack to the closet in the bedroom three because of the number of drops in that room yeah i don't know about fiber like is fiber worth it fiber's expensive isn't it and it's not really needed right now i feel like if i run conduit i can run fiber later that would work but most sensible would be in the study cupboard in natural position, however, that spot by your office works nice and gives you full control over while keeping it out of the way of the family. Yeah. The problem is, is like, this is not, I don't plan on this being forever, right? Like 10, 15 years, probably a house, but I do plan on reselling it eventually. It is your house for quite a while, though, so weigh, against, so weigh that against resell. Probably put it where you want it most. Let the buyers figure that out later. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the thing is, is like that that study downstairs is basically a bedroom. It has a walk-in closet, or it has a closet, but it's a pretty big closet, and it has a window. The only thing that makes it not a bedroom, apparently in Texas or apparently everywhere, I don't know, is that it doesn't have a window that is operable. I think that's it. I think this window here is just not a window that can be like opened. I think that's the only thing. Bedroom three closet is bigger. Yes. Um, so the the study closet is six foot four by five foot. So six foot four by five foot. And the upstairs closet, my closet, is is four foot seven by. Eight foot five. Four foot seven by eight foot five. What is that? Um, I need a square foot calculator.
this good? <laughs> this work? Blink. What did I say? Four foot seven. How do I do inches? Uh, I have to convert everything to images. Uh, just between the switches, the ubiquity switches don't do king ping gigabyte over copper. Just between the switches, they do. Are you talking about what? Yeah, they do. I'm sure they do. Yeah, David says they do. David seems to be pretty knowledgeable. Are you sure, Josh? Like, I thought they did. The bedroom needs two means of ingress. Egress. I don't know what that means. Oh, of out. Oh, meaning getting out. See, that's what I thought. Yeah. Opens easy with a rock. That's true. <laughs> Madison says, I think the window opens. If not, she wants it to open. But I think we're also adding in more windows there. I think, so right now, there's so much to talk about, guys. For ma'am. So downstairs, We're going to be, I think, adding two windows here to the study, two small ones. And then upstairs, they're just then the freaking upstairs one first. Stupid. Upstairs, I think we're going to be adding in a, a second window here to Madison's office on the left here. So you guys can, guys can't see that. Jesus Christ, I keep having to move this. It's, um, putting a window here. On the left wall, like so, there's a window. There's a first window here, and I think we're gonna add another window to her office. Hell yeah, plant room. Yeah, Travis, I'll have you come in and, and just make put plants in our study, and you also have to come here and take care of them every day because Madison can't. Um, I have ten gig. I have ten gig over copper on my Ubiquitu switch here at home. Okay, that's good to know. Um. I just realized the bed three closet has a window. Yeah, it does have a window, which is cool. I mean, so it's the the reason it has a window. I think is because it is a it's the front of the house, so it has a window to make it make the front of the house look good. Rubber floor with drain and water spigot inside full set. <laughs> Jesus, no, no study will be an indoor gym. I think it could be yeah. rubber floor is idea stance. Um. Yeah, what about that resale value stuff? Okay, let's see. So, what is it? Four foot seven. How much? Uh, four foot is forty eight inches. What's forty eight plus seven? Fifty five. Five. Five inches by eight foot five. What's eight times? 1296 plus 5 is 101. Square footage is 462 square feet upstairs. So my closet is 462 square feet. Is that right? I feel like that's a lot. No way that's 400. Did I do that wrong? Four foot seven. By eight feet, four and a half inches. What are your plans for the garage? So the garage will probably be the ping pong table, as Madison said, um, and Madison's car will also be in the garage. So here, so I'm thinking, depends on where we put her car, but if we do it like this, there will probably be ping pong, ping pong table in the middle, and our car is on each side. I feel like my car, it's a Porsche. It's not really a Porsche, but Porsche in this thing. Madison's big ass SUV. Um, needs to be AV in the garage too. That's that is true. Probably want to put like a TV on one of these walls somewhere. I, I plan on running AV to the 
or not IV, but Ethernet to the garage doors, I think. But right, probably need something somewhere for TV over the workbench. Like, should I maybe a TV over here on the on the Madison side of the wall, and maybe one by the door? Maybe. The big researchers have ten gigabytes said. You guys are, you guys know too much, David. You know too much. Are you a network engineer, David, or something? Yeah, insulated garage doors would be nice. I wonder how much that'll cost. I feel like it, that'd be cheaper to do ourselves. But in the design suit, we may be able to choose that. If you work in the garage or on cars, then send CAC 6. To the we, don't do, we don't work in the garage. We're not going to do car stuff in the garage. That'll not be something we do. We will do... Um, I mean, we will have like a ping pong table potentially, and she may do, or Madison may do... Um, um, like crafting of some sort potentially in here in this room and in the garage potentially so I mean I would rather run cable now than not especially since it's downstairs network tech good good I'm glad you're here then that is very helpful with all your knowledge I am very thankful that you're here hate typing though as you can see from my comments <laughs> yeah sorry man I um yeah it's kind of hard to be interactive on youtube it's very difficult. i appreciate all the comments that you have done you have a ton of comments and um i'm gonna need to i'm gonna, I'm gonna need to rewatch my own stream just to make sure i didn't miss anything because you guys are amazing and just helping me so much this is my daily dose of the internet thanks for the video look forward to the follow up cheers from denmark have a great evening have a great one johnny i appreciate you uh hanging in here Appreciate everyone hanging in here. It's uh, uh very helpful that you were, guys were here and hopefully helpful from what people other people are seeing as well. Um, I will do indeed a, a follow-up video on what I learned here and what I planned on doing. Um, and then also just iterative videos throughout the next year that uh, um, that I'll be doing as well. So like, you know, going through the whole home buying and home building process. Um, and putting as much as I can up on YouTube. Uh, flooring choices in the garage. Travis, I have no idea. Probably something we can do in the design center. Um, but probably not that important to me. Uh, to not just be concrete. Um, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Thomas. I uh, hope you, uh, Hope to see you around some more in the in the videos, but uh, um, every time every time Thomas says something in my on my YouTube channel or in my comments, everybody everybody else comments back and they're like, "Holy, you you have Thomas watching your videos, or you have Thomas doing your dashboard. That's amazing. That means you know Thomas is like the everyone's go to front end person. So if I have Thomas's approval." And I have everyone else's approval. So I appreciate that, Thomas. Yeah, epoxy later might be nice. Depending, we'll see, Madison, if it's expensive. Go to the design studio. It probably is going to be. But it's always something we can do later. Like you said, easy enough to do later, better on spinning. Yeah. The other thing is, like, I have to figure out the best money to spend now that I would make, you know, a lot of money to do later. Uh, meaning, you know, wiring downstairs is going to be really, really hard to do later. Meaning, I, you know, getting through the crawl space, even if there is one in between the floors and, and like running this wire, it's going to be expensive. Where right now, I could do the wiring downstairs later and, and, and the lighting. Oh, yeah, lighting. Um, Madison wants to spend all of our money. On the design center, so don't let her tell you that I'm spending all the money. She's probably spending more money in the design center than I will be. She wants to do, she wants to do hardwood, not hardwood, but um, tile look hardwood all the way throughout the house, and then somehow do something on the stairs that is not tile but hardwood of some sort. She does not want carpet anywhere. She's gonna kill my. She's gonna kill my soundproofing. Yeah, uh, Travis, we are also getting. 
bringing all upstairs is getting um, sound insulation. There's a note here. Here we go. Sound insulation on all interior walls upstairs. Um, insulate. Oh, so lighting. Yes. So lighting. I want to do. What do we say? Let me just pull up my notes real quick. Everybody can look at them here. Here are the changes, right? Pull it over here so we can continue looking. And insulation will be so nice. Yeah, I know I can yell and Madison won't be able to hear me. It'll be nice. Um, so I'm going to be adding probably four extra. Actually, I want to pull up plans. Acrobat. Go to the garage. Rotate clockwise. Make sure you guys can see everything here. I'll put myself here. Okay. So, in the garage. I'm a new streamer. I am not professional at this stuff. Can I zoom? Hello? Okay, you can't zoom. Hopefully you guys can see this. Um, but um carpet in the theater rooms, but life proof in the other rooms. We have too many dogs for the instance carpet. Yeah, we don't actually. So the game room is going to be a media room type of thing, but it's not going to be like a movie room. It's it's too open for that. So um, there's a half wall in the game room. So I didn't do the upstairs. Shit. Uh, upstairs here. This wall. Okay, this wall. So here's the stairs and here's an overlook to the downstairs. This is a half wall here. We're probably going to put it as iron railing um the installation will be so nice covered in theater rooms your bedroom is on the first floor and your office is on the second first time you roll your chair around on the hardwood you'll be looking at a couple scouts like <laughs> yeah madison you might want to let's see which room is over top of our bedroom it's uh your room your room yeah so i mean at least it's not my bedroom she goes to bed earlier than i do a lot of the times by the way i don't know if you do ducks or power across the pond or not, but if you do run a few extra run ducks or power across the pond or not. Pond? Pond. Thomas, I don't know what pond. Um, if you have dogs, get laminate flooring, get good quality, not cheap for those scratch. Yeah, so we're going to be doing tile-like floor or tile flooring that looks like hardwood. Very popular. Um, sounds like woodlock tile is the front runner. Yes. We're not doing laminate. We can get wood tile. Look like tiles that look that'll work everywhere, but the stairs are questionable. Basically ceramic tile printed to look. Uh, yeah, so the stairs are a different story. It's like we if we put tile on the stairs, then it becomes very slippery. We could put a carpet runner, but then the overall it's still slippery. Um and I don't even know if you could put a Carpet runner on tile. I don't know how that works. You can't really nail it in. Across the pond. You guys are on the other side of... Oh, shit. Oh, okay, got it. I, th I thought you meant something like in the house across the pond. Got it. I don't know if you do ducks for power. Run a few extra. And ducks for... I don't know. I don't know exactly. Oh, they don't... They don't do electrical conduit. No. They do low voltage conduit. They do not do electrical conduit. I do. I do plan on doing um, AV conduit. So extra, con extra, probably one and a half inch to most of the places. And if I run it downstairs, the the network rack downstairs, and I'll probably do like a three inch conduit upstairs to the attic, but three inch or one and a half inch conduit everywhere else, most of the room. Okay. Yeah, sorry, Thomas, that your question just actually was so 
not us that it threw me for a loop okay getting back to what i was doing what was i doing okay so in the garage here does anybody know what hb is on the outside i don't know what hb means i mean here it says hb on the outside this is one out back too I'm thinking maybe it's water or maybe just an it doesn't seem like an outlet does it i don't know um okay so in the in the garage they have one gfi and another gfi they have only two outlets in the garage like this seems ridiculous so I'm, i like my idea would be to add uh, add four more and um hopefully not on it um Brown rod. Okay. Hose bib. That makes sense. Hose bib. So four extra um, garage outlets. GFI. And then so four extra outlets, probably two on this wall and then another one on this wall and then one somewhere else on the back wall. Uh, and then I'm adding in one extra outlet for um for electric cars to charge the electric car if we ever get one the, uh, another thing that i'm adding make sure you're going to do double every socket outlet and put a blind plate on it so you can easily put the cables that you want in the future like extra make sure you're going to double every socket outlet double Really? Okay. I'll, I'll look at that. I don't know what double means. Like, what exactly that entails. How expensive that is. Um, okay, in the kitchen. I want to do... What do you guys think of outlets above the kitchen cabinets? Um, probably three. So, one on this section of cabinets. One on this section of cabinets beside the stove. And there's going to be a hood in between that. And then... Uh, one on this section of the cabinet so that I can do um, LED lights up there. And then also three close to the ground. So outlets on like underneath where you can't really see them, but on the, on the, uh, on the cabinets themselves underneath. Yeah. And think LEDs. Yep. Um, if you want to do serious garage work, put a sub panel in there. Uh, I don't really plan on doing much garage work. If you have electrical cars, have a 20, 240 volt 60 amp circuit on each side. So I thought about doing it on one side and maybe it depends on the price to do it on the other side. I'll have to see. Yeah, in the toe plate. Is that what they're called? That's what I hit my toe on. Is that what they're called that? Um, okay. So above and underneath the cabinets for LEDs. I think LEDs make the kitchen look so good. Um, so this is going into like more of the smart home stuff because I want to be able to do that. Yes, and that's something else I was gonna think as well as in the bathrooms for the night lights. Ugh, it's gonna get expensive, guys. Always think cask light. Yep. Uh well I also want to do lights underneath the cabinet, so above the cabinets, underneath the cabinets, and in in, in the middle of the cabinet. So um, LEDs, so that you can see the stuff that you're doing. Yeah, damn, that's a lot of freaking outlets, man. I'm gonna need you guys to watch more ads. Um, cabinets in the middle. Okay, so one thing is why don't why in the U.S. Maybe it's just the U.S. Do they not put outlets in closets? They have no outlets in this closet. So I kind of want to put two outlets: one in the. You guys see this? Yes. Okay. One on the left side and one on the right side of the walk-in closet. Travis, we talked about it. Something Madison wanted, but we never actually got a price on it, and. 
we're going to do smart vacuum. So yeah. Yeah. You can put outlets in the closets, but why don't they put them in the closets normally? But like, I don't, I don't get like, there's not at least one outlet in every closet. Baffles me. So outlets outside. So as you can see here, they put one outlet in the back. Wh one. What am I supposed to do with one outlet for my whole backyard? So I want to have at least, like, at least one more on the opposite wall. But I mean, can you put outlets, like, over here? Next to the bedroom? I think you can, right? Yeah, so I guess it's not required, so they don't have to do it. Cheaper for the builder. More expensive for me. Great. And it's business, but fuck. Okay, so another... I, I kind of want more outlets. And then also some in the eaves as well. But apparently, how, does anybody know how much an outlet costs for a new build? Anybody done that yet? I put outlets anywhere. Well, that's good, because... I don't see why there's not more outlets on the outside of the house. Crazy. They only put one in the front porch. So I want another one, at least another one over here on the right hand side of the, of the porch. If you're looking at it and then one in the eve, so I can, we can do really the idea would be to, to, to do Dr. Z's, um, permanent led strips for the outside. So that, you know, I never had to change them They're good for any holiday. Um. Yeah, who does anybody know how expensive outlets are to add? Like, am I going to be out ten grand just adding all these outlets? Okay, so they also I want to put an outlet, a, a TV outlet for the living room wall. There's going to be a fireplace here where my mouse is. <laughs> Jeff did not like the word of of cock in here. Also got a silcock or simply a host spigot. Got it. Permanent LEDs don't need 120 volt at the ease, just low voltage. Oh, that's true. That's, that's a good point. Okay, I'll have to put that down right now. Pitch only. But yeah, so if I do that way, uh -huh, uh -huh. okay. An exterior wall is probably going to be more, but the Alice himself just had to be GFI. Yep. Yeah, for the outside. Yeah. If I look, because I mean, this is a lot. Like, this is probably over 20 extra outlets. How much is an outlet? Hopefully, less than 100 bucks. Okay. Why is everything so expensive? Okay, keep on going here. Uh, TV outlet in the game room. And then we're, I'm also going to add in a floor outlet in the family room. Yep. But you have dig, Digi Uno's near Eve's. This strip plug in. Yep. Okay. Good idea. Okay. Moving on to the upstairs. What I'm going to do upstairs. Where to put myself? We'll keep myself right here right now. Travis, yeah, we tried to get one of those, and apparently they were just outrageously expensive. Um. Oh, it's included, Madison. Okay, cool. That's good. I didn't know that. Where was I going? Oh, so game room. Okay, so in the game room, there is a block for a fan and light. So right now it's just probably going to be one of those boob lights. I don't know what you call them, but I call them a boob light. Um, hopefully YouTube, you don't um, take down my monetization for that. Um, I need money to pay for this YouTube. Uh, block for the fan and light, right? But that's the only lighting in this game room. What I'm thinking is adding recess lighting. So four recess lights, at least four around the game room and then also adding four 
adding four in the living room as well. Back up here, adding four in the living room. Recess light. So the living room ceiling is going to be like 22 foot tall, but I still think we need more light in there. I don't know where we're going to put the recess lighting or if they can do that for that kind of ceiling, but we shall see. Again, none of this has been approved. This is just my ideas so far. Um, add the recessed lighting. Okay, I'm gonna. I want to add um, outlets to the closets of our bedrooms. So upstairs bedrooms. I want to add an outlet to the pantry of the kitchen. I want to add deep light switches, and then confirm that we're getting neutral wires to all the light switches. I think it is purely standard now. Um, but um, I want to make sure. I know apparently there's a way you can get around it. Um, but yeah. You can always dim light. You can't add light. Uh, exactly. So that's why I think more light here and more light in the living room is, is pretty necessary. Um, in the dining room, what do we have in the dining room? We have one boob light. Should I do, should we keep the chandelier or do recess lighting? Do we need a chandelier? I, I always hated the chandelier. I don't know. This is in the study. It has four of these recess lights, which I think is very nice. And in our bedroom, it has four of these recess lights as well. Um, if the game room... I don't know what you're saying yes to, Madison. Um, in, if the game room, we need a chandelier. Why? In the game room, is the media having half walls? Yeah, it's going to hurt its acoustics, we know. Um... But with the whole look and feel of the house and where it doesn't actually have a door or anything, we could have added an extra room in this section to make it a media room and make it enclosed and everything. But we decided against it. It was like 12 extra grand or something. Um, we decided against it. It's we're We like movies and everything, but we're not... We aren't bougie enough to get a full theater room yet i think in our next house for sure but we'll see i, I still want to have some good sound in here but i i do agree it's going to hurt this acoustics a lot okay so that's a that's for the electrical now let me go to my wiring here let me see what you guys think <clears throat> um okay so here's my ranking of what i think we need um low voltage wise and and this is not this is not adding anything from what you guys have told me today this is just purely what i had before this stream and we're going on two hours and 20 minutes so um i make i think I, i'm just hiding everything from you guys yeah, let's just do this. So, the fancy notion. Yeah, okay, sorry guys. Should be able to see it now. It, is it big enough? Can you guys see it? Can you see the text? It looks big enough on my screen. Okay, so, first one is conduit. Running conduit to basically everywhere. Second priority would be getting security cameras. For at least four. At very least. Four. Um, AP drops to three or four locations within the house. Um, it, now I'm kind of thinking between four and five. Each corner of the house alternating upstairs and downstairs. Um, and then one outside potentially. One outside, I'm not too worried about. But at least I, I might just get the drop there and not put one outside yet, but we'll see. Two drops. And I'm really thinking three drops now to every TV. Um, every TV. So that I can do IR, back and forth, HDMI, and audio, and then... Or just internet connectivity there. Um, I want to get 
conduit all the way to the network services. So wherever they're going to come in, I want to make sure I get conduit to that. Um, I want to, I want to get low voltage, like basically the same as shades, low voltage to the fireplace so I can turn that on and off, uh, via, you know, like a, an ethernet cable to the fireplace so I can turn that on and off. Uh, I don't know how that's going to work, but we'll see. Extra deep electrical boxes, at six to every window location for shades. I think I'm just going to do the back of the house. Not exactly sure yet. We'll see. Um, but the, especially the, the sliding open doors and the dining room and master bedroom. Um, I want to get touch screens for controls. I think I don't need a full outlet there. I think I can do it over ethernet, power over ethernet for the touch screens. I'm not sure though, if it has enough power. I have to look that up. Audio is in here, but I think that's probably the least important. I want to get reset. What do you guys think of recessed wall boxes? Like, like pretty large wall boxes that are fully recessed, have all my stuff in there so they can, you know, it's easier to manage in the back. Um, drop to the front and back door. So I have a drop to the front and back door, but I'm not 100% sure if I need it, especially if I have a door, if I have just doorbell cameras. Um, and then make sure that they're all marked whenever they're added to the panel. So those are my like rankings so far before the stream. Uh, but what do you guys think about these? Put conduit underneath the driveway. Um, I've heard of people doing that, but I don't exactly know for what. For like, what exactly? Um, how many circuits are there going to be used? I, are you going to be restricted day one? I have to ask my builder to break down my circuits into smaller groups. Okay. Um, break. Where am I typing at? Hello? Break down groups of electrical. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be using, uh, I think Ubiquiti has some pretty good access to that. Um, okay. So I think these are, these are still kind of my overall rankings. I may be adding more um, to them, but overall, those are still some big, some big rankings. On to on the driveways to run low voltage for lighting, or power, or sprinklers, or whatever. Well, where does it run to? Like, is it just underneath the ground? And, like, I'll have to dig it up later or something, or? I'll have to see exactly what the price is on that. I'll add that, though. Talk about. Undo it under drive. <clears throat> Driveway lighting irrigation. Okay. That's the chase way. Okay. Okay. I wonder how expensive that is. Okay. Good idea then to, to at least take a look at it. Onto it beside the driveway, not under. So do you mean like... What if we had... We have two sides of the driveway though, right? Should it be on both sides? So if this is our driveway, right? Well, it'd be concrete or whatever all the way to here. Should we get it on both sides? Just one side by the porch? Ensure demarc is set up. Hey, okay, Bradley, you're going to have to explain that. Um, what is that? Do it on yourself. 20 pieces. 20 pieces of device. Pipe drop. It in. Okay. 
I would have circuits rent each side of the garage, side driveway, not run conduit. Okay, so have you're seeing like right where this this lamp is. Can you? I don't have OBS. Okay, you can't see anything. Great. So right here, there's a there's a light fixture, basically right right there or right underneath it. Have Ethernet ran. If this is brick, how do I get to it? I don't know. Oh, right. Okay. Yes. Got it. Got it. Got it. Key mark is ingress of service. And then on this side where this light switch is. Where do I put the drop though? Like, how do I get through the brick? Key mark. The last thing you want is fiber company to add this after the house is finished and then your router is in a crappy location. Um, so I'm going to definitely have a network rack and that'll be where everything should go. Um, so I'll, I'll, the plan is to have conduit from the outside to my network rack, wherever the network rack goes. That's the idea. If you can run pre, if you can pre run the internal fiber before it's finished so that they connect their work. Yeah, you want the DMARC here. But if, if I can have it do a conduit, then it, I think it wouldn't be terrible, right? But yes. I, so I think I'm just going to go with the study, even though it pains me to put it downstairs. I have to run that conduit from the from the study all the way up to the attic. But I, I think it's probably the best option. I'll still think about it, though. Because if it's upstairs, then I mean... I want it to, I want the DMARC location to be downstairs and like, you know, when a easy to get to plays and then just run the cable through a conduit upstairs. Um, okay, 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 okay. Just realize that there's numerous ways to do everything. Just talk to your contractor and ask them what they sh should do to make things easier for you in the future. Yeah, that's the plan. I have a, so currently, so I have to talk to, or I have to do electrical first or or get electrical done first. Once I figure out electrical, then I can go to the AV company. Um, the AV company is only going to be doing low voltage, which is good because they're specialized in low vo voltage, and I know some electricians aren't good at low voltage. Um, but, um, but yeah, so electrical-wise, I want to add all those outlets. I wonder how much it costs. Let, let me look up on Reddit right now. That is? Uh, construction. This was two years ago, but this is not helpful. I don't wire for this is quite good. Okay. I'll look at that. Sure. Cause I, I didn't even know. I knew I needed to make sure I knew where it was, but I didn't think it would matter if where I put the rack. I mean, not on the other side of the house, of course, but as long as it's on the same side of the house. Trying to figure out how much an outlet's going to cost. Does not say. I cannot find it on Reddit. Fine, fine, fine. Um. Okay. 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 The electrical and cable and fiber demark will be probably near the garage. I think it'll be near the garage. Really? Yeah, I was thinking it would be near study. Is it really, can I, I can probably place it wherever I want though, right? Um, yeah, I mean, the contractor that we're working with used to be a smaller company. Um, but I will definitely be looking at 
talking with them and seeing what they think. But I also, I mean, I've done a lot of research. So, I mean, like, this is what this is for as well, is to go in there knowing a little bit. So I know if he's, you know, putting me down the road or not, or if you know, he actually knows something is actually going to help me out kind of stuff. Uh, electrical panel will probably be in the garage. Okay. That's fine. The electrical panel can be in the garage. Um, that's where it is in my current house, or my current rental. Okay. But that's fine. The I'm not too worried about the electrical, but the like network services being on the right hand side of the house. Does it does that matter? And looking at it, actually. If if we look at my lot, the box, so there's like a green box that has, I think, all of the, the network people will put all their stuff into, like inside, in the yard. That's actually on the right-hand side of the house as well. And here's where... Are we getting fiber... Internet um, from AT and T, I believe. Not, I don't think it's going to be cable. Good, run to the study. Okay. Okay. So should I then make sure to put my network rack in the study, and not across the freaking house? Then I guess because if I put it in my room, that is literally the opposite of the study. Okay. Okay, I would just put it in the study then, and then then would what do you think three would three inch conduit from the study closet all the way up to the attic so that I could run extra wires later if I wanted to, um, and then conduit from every other place in the house, making sure I have that. But for the attic spaces and like the second floor additions, having conduit just run straight up into the attic. And then, then at the end, I think, wouldn't it be make more sense for the conduit? See, the problem with like three inches overkill, but that three inches is like everything from the, if, if I ever add anything. Okay. So three inches is overkill. So one, one and a half inch. Okay, three inches is good. Okay. So got two overkills, one good. Um, Okay. So my plan, the plan would be that everything from the upstairs, if I add anything extra, would be going through that new conduit. Okay, Madison wants five. I don't know if five is five is gonna. That's a large. That's that's large. <sighs> Google conduit fill calculator. Conduit fill. Uh, what kind of conduit should I get? There's multiple types of conduit, apparently. EMT, ENT, FMC, IMS. I hate all of these freaking acronyms, man. I don't know what I want to add, but try to get a fiber run from the DMARC to where you want your router. So the router will be directly in the storage, right? So it'll be just like an ubiquity router. Um, it won't have, or, or there won't be a wireless AP in here. It'll be something in here like in this study. I don't, well, I already have that in there. Do I just need a router? I think I'll put it as a wireless AP in here and have all my routing and everything done in the storage closet. Okay, just high oh, okay. Got it. Um, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, three, I mean, I feel like three inches is not overkill, like, especially because, like, 
it's not just going to that one room. It's not, you know, going to a bedroom where the three inches will probably be overkill because it's how many are you actually going to have to one room in that one location that you put the conduit. But this would be in each one of those conduits that I put new stuff in, all of these would run back and into this one big conduit down to the study. If DNT fiber will not natively run single NAT on ubiquity, you will need to route the AT. You're, David, you're too smart. I know. NTT router and get certs off it and drop it into a new ubiquity router. David, um, I'm gonna call you whenever I get all this. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna phone you up, give you a call, be like, hey man. Tell me, tell me what to do. Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just have you come to my house. Do it for me. I mean, you, you just know too much. I I don't know if I can absorb all this information. Okay. I mean, that's good to know though. For the AT and T router, I have, currently have AT and T routers. The process of putting that shit in, they have to put in like the full on. A big ass electric box which is or like big ass box in my in my house which I did not like three inches will take 60 oh shit 60 is a lot Sixty, so sixty things upstairs. I'm already going to be running up quite a bit. I need sixty. What if I run fiber upstairs though? How much more expensive is it going to be to get one point five versus three? I feel like it's probably minimal, right? Like I get three to each individual room. The one, because it's going from, it's going to have everything from the upstairs that I add later, not the new stuff, but every, anything that I add later, how much is the, is the price difference? Don't just think network through conduit and closet to add. Think speakers, network, yeah, through, through, through. So I think, I think. I think five or I think three inches is is not overkill. Yeah, I think three inches, three inches from the study to the attic, and then one point five everywhere else. Like like going into each room. I think that makes sense. I don't need. I will never need like thirty to each room, but I mean, future proofing for a lot. Throughout the whole house into that conduit would be nice. Yeah, so I think I think three inches is good. Okay. I feel like I haven't done anything except talk to you guys and I feel bad. I feel like you're you're just kind of watching a podcast almost. But I, I do appreciate everyone helping me out here. I've done that one. Rotate again. Really quickly, let me save this.
Just check you can get a set of AT&T router certs in Mac from eBay and load them into Ubiquity. Nice. Is very good then. Probably will do that. Very good. So I think, I mean, I think I've learned a lot from, from everything, just even like, I don't even, I feel like I didn't even do much and you just guys taught me so much. Um, but overall, I think I have a good plan. Really? Ubiquity routers are far too limited. Why, why do you say that? That's, that's an interest because everybody else I've seen loves Ubiquity. You opened the floodgates. Oh, God. The 191 inches. Can't I zoom out all the way? Hello? Okay, now we gotta crawl the walls. To be fair, I'm used to enterprise network gear. Okay, so what do you recommend then? Like, should I not go with Ubiquity? Look, I did my thing wrong here. <clears throat> oh my gosh. I don't know if that was loud or not. The big is wireless is good for sure. Their great weights are kind of meh the price they charge there's not much you can't do there's so much you can't do i've heard that their gateways can be kind of buggy ubiquity if he's not a network guy like i'm like half a network guy right like i went to school for your science i know my way around some networking i'm not a full-on network engineer i do know a little bit um i would say probably more than just your person off the street um, and I'm, I do a, I mean, I'm do a lot of research on it and I plan on doing a good network rack, but I wouldn't say I'm a network engineer. Um, yeah, I work at Eric or Broco or Brocade and Cisco gear at work. If since if he, if he is. If I am a network guy, go with PF Sense. 
Make sure electricians run neutral to all your live switches and for a Z-Wave position. Yes, that Gary, I'm going to make sure. So I'm, I have a note to make sure, but it should be standard, I would hope. Um, but I know there are ways that people can get around it. VFSense isn't difficult and would recommend it over USD. And yeah, haha, Ubiquity's firmware is in permanent beta. Ah, great, of course. Um, PFSense is a great choice and free. What do you mean by free? Is PFSense, I guess I've heard of PFSense, but I don't know exactly what it is. Is that the software, I'm guessing? Yeah, open source firewall. Your software. What about Dream Machine Pro? Yeah, I've heard about that. Now, OpenVPN is in the GUI and Dream Machine on Dream Machine Pro. Oh, God, no. Dream, Dream Machine Pro has so many problems since launch. Yeah, but getting better. Don't get into the whole Dream Machine Pro. Uh, for firewall, use PFSense, not Ubiquity. Um, if you can handle PFSense, that's what I suggest. I'm listening to this with interest as I'm looking in the SU. So if I did PFSense on a server, what PoE switch should I look at? You buy a used switch from eBay, you can pick up so many feature rich products for cheap nowadays that will run laps around Unify switches. Are you getting a nice media server as well? Um, uh, I don't know at that point. Yes, maybe eventually. Unify switches are okay, but firmware is frustrating. PFSense might look overwhelming at first, but it is good. I run PFSense on an HT or HPT73 think line. Okay. But I need managed or unmanaged switch if running PFSense. I've used PFSense in testing environment once. Gaming was pretty weird. Latency issues. I have configured something wrong. Okay. A lot of information. Um, is So I know Ubiquity has some sort of home assistant integration. I believe. I think you can actually do like that. I think there's an add on where you can actually manage your PF, your ubiquity stuff in Home Assistant. What is PFSense and what is its integration like? Can I do, like, if I have wireless APs, can I do occupancy sensing and stuff like that? PFSense is great. Open wall fire source or open source firewall. Has it running on a brick? PC with nine or with six NICs do and as I do lag have segment network. Okay, okay. If sense is great with games if controller of Unify. Add-on is just like a virtual machine for the controller. Okay. Can't use management on add-on with the okay. If sense can do layer three, but also consider that you're sending all your layer three traffic back to the router before it gets to its destination. So, okay, David says, use Ubiquity APs and switches, but a PFSense router. Okay. Like how, much, how much configuring, if I get a PFSense router and I hook it up, how much configuring would I need to do for it to work? I'm okay to, to like search some Reddit posts and stuff like that. But I do just want it like once I do configure it to just work, you know the wife approval factor and everything. Well, get how to what I did. Dang it. That is nine hundred and twenty nine feet. Good, 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 good. That's the only thing about this one. Is it it's confusing to do this? Like I know. This wall, 
is 15 feet, 11 inches. That's 102, that's 120, or 191 inches. Okay, cool, I got it right. Okay, I got it right this time. Not much really. There's a lot of great resources out there than set and forget. Awesome. The Ubiquity APs will integrate into HA for home away. It always depends on the hardware he puts on it. I think PFSense has hardware too. Check out Lawrence Systems on YouTube. He does a lot of PFSense and Ubiquity AP guides. Okay, yeah, I have seen him on, on YouTube. I have a HT or HP double gigabyte HP. I have my WAN connected to one port and my LAN connected It will run on pretty much zero. But you will have latency if it's slow. So what hardware should I get? Does PFSense have like a recommended one? Or I know you have an HP, but do you recommend that? Or, or HPT 730 and client? Like what, 500 bucks? That explains my issue. I've only given it half a gig of RAM for testing. Yeah. Does PFSense has it, have its own hardware or, uh, I, I think you said that, what should I, if I went PFSense, what should I go? I'm going to try and make this top floor quickly here. Cool. So easy as that to get the like, outer edges done. You'd have, to, you'd have to have something like a 2000 watt to, to get any latency. Gate is a branded HW is fully supported. Okay. Hardware. <clears throat> I have a dual Xeon server. Definitely do not recommend that. <laughs> Don't run PFCs on that. Depends on what plugins you're running and what firewall you have, the more you will have. Okay. You said that you use PFSense and Ubiquity switches. Is it easy way to configure the VLANs then, especially with IoT devices, VLANs should be easy to configure. Of course, goes without saying. Yeah, Negate is PFSense OEM hardware. Netgate. Don't need it. Okay. Um, yeah. I know that, um, what's his name? Uh, He hasn't put out a video in a while. Um, what's that other big home assistant, home automation? We got Paul Hibbert, Dr. Z's, and the hookup. Hookup. He did full ubiquity. Ubiquity. But I think they sent him the, the gear. He also did Dream Machine Pro. He said he had a big trouble with that. Um, I'm not... Yeah. I mean, PFSense from what you guys are saying, seems like the better solution. It just may need more work. 
um, while it sounds like ubiquity may just be a out of the box solution. So I'm going to draw this really quickly. In in this software, it is pretty easy once you get it started. Like I think the hardest part is actually setting up the scales for me. I don't know why it was so hard, but. Look up on, only had trouble migrating his old network to the new one. The rest of this he said was fine. Doctor Z has some issues with his A's with his APs as far as I know. Yes, you can have VLANs on both PFSense and Unify switches. Unify switches are only layer two though, so bear in mind unless you go for a much more expensive ones. What software is that? So this is floorplanner.com. It's all in browser. Um you can there's a free version where you can have one floor. Um the the Non-free version, you can export 3D images to a higher quality. Like I can export an image, but you can export one to a little bit of higher quality um, with the non-free version. And you can pay for like just the higher quality image, which I might do in order to do like a floor plan and home assistant, but it's not that expensive. It's like five bucks. Too. I mean, it's not cheap, but you know what I mean. I mean, it's pretty intuitive after you get the scaling done. After The scaling is probably the hardest thing because you don't know what to do it in like meters, centimeters, inches, or whatever. If you're imperial, like I put in the feet and I just didn't know what to do with it. I made it like a oh, hundred and some feet. But once I figured that out, it was fine. This is a half wall. What I can do later is actually note that that's a half wall. And put in those types of doors as well, which is cool. Um, there is another software. It's called Sweet Home 3D, I believe. Uh, I know that Dr. Z's uses it a lot. But I, find, I found that this one was more intuitive. The other one was kind of, it's like open source and a little janky. But this one is more just easy to use. Didn't really want to go. I didn't want to make this too hard. Isn't really worth it to make hard. That's just my opinion. It could be easy for some other people. You don't have to get them exactly right. And if I get one wrong, just come in here and change it a little bit. And update it. be honest, I don't know the difference between level 2 and level 3. Unified switches have layer 3 in early access, but I don't think he's going to be doing layer 3 if he went PF since router. You don't need layer 3 for VLANs. Or it's difficult to explain. You can do VLAN tagging on layer 2 devices, but they will not work properly unless you have something you can route them. Like PF sense, you will only need layer 3 if you route at a switch. So I think I understand what it means now. VLANs don't need layer three. Yes, you can. You do if you want to actually route them.
at this point I'm done. And now it knows that what my rooms are. It knows that this is a bedroom. It knows that this is kind of the game room slash um, entry level bedroom, bedroom. Oh, I forgot a wall, I guess. Must have not connected to this very well. There we go. Layer 3 routing at the switch, basically turning switch into a router. You don't need VLAN. I do this at work every day for a home with PFSense. You don't need Layer 3. I heard that Layer 3 is... You don't really need it. All here. Only need layer three and multiple switches throughout the house. He has one closet and with router and switch. That if you do not have something that can route them. All right, so this is what the the floor plan looks like. I can now go to my now do it somehow. How do I go and where is it at? The way I can turn off. I knew how. Okay, I've lost the ability to do that. Great. I only need layer three if not to switch it out the house, which has one closet and one router. That wasn't it. Why have I just lost the memory on how to do this? Okay, well, whatever. Doesn't really matter. The next thing we can start doing is adding in the furniture and stuff. So I'm just going to add in a few things like, um, I don't know what I'm going to add. Which I don't even know if I want to add anything up here. I uh, will later. Okay, but yeah, so you can drag and drop stuff over here. You can add a couch, turn it around. Here. Um. I really make it smaller. But, um, yeah. I think this is like a super cool software that's pretty easy to use. Um, in order to do this kind of stuff, I think that, oh, here we go. Background settings, make this go to hidden. Now I just have my floor plan and go to the 3d view. Zoom all the way in and I see my stuff here. Now what we can do is make this a half wall. 
say, hey, this here is a half wall. What I'm going to do is it's going to be raised from like nine feet to like six and a half or five and a half feet. This wall do the same. Why? That's one thing is you can never type in stuff into this. Doesn't like that. Now, if I go down here, see that it's a half wall and make them the same height, but then it looks, it does look a little weird and it makes stuff a little janky, but it does allow for the half walls to be built. If you look at it at a certain angle, so it does not like it. This is kind of new to me, but can a server running PFSense act as a tier three layer? Um, yes, it has routing ability. If since is a router, layer three switch is a louder. But I would have an extra NICs to the machine to handle the routing, the different switches, right? No. You can use VLANs to get other switches to use multi-port NICs. Okay, but now that we've done this, right, all right, right, and go back, and we don't have any doors yet. <clears throat> There's a door. So you have your standard door here. All of our doors are like two foot four, two foot eight. That door in particular is two foot four, I believe. And then if I need to switch it to go the other way, I just click this little button, and then you can also switch it back and forth. Must be a smaller door. But okay, so that's cool. Should I create and unify this? Um, I think I already created one. In here. Real alarm, try connected. Really nice way to rip and replace the alarm system with more open platform that integrates with Home Assistant. Yeah, so is connected the one that can connect to Home Assistant? Or, um, so they're putting in alarm.com stuff and then the whole hub in, in one of my rooms. But um, I want to kind of rip out alarm.com and just use my own system. Okay, so here is kind of where I always think. Let me see. So let's let's redo this. So this is kind of the floor plan. It's very close. Not exact. But I was thinking now put one can I move that? Yo, what? Copy and place this here. Delete that one. Can I delete this one? Copy this. And I would think putting it here. See, the problem is, is that this doesn't seem to to show like it's going to hit all these other rooms very well. I don't know. This is when I said I was going to have it in my office. 
So this is what I was thinking for the second floor. So this is my office. And this is the game room. Connected board connects directly to it. Okay, so can I rip out alarm.com and then can up use connected, I wonder? Then for the first floor, from what you guys were saying, I would put one in, rotate this. I would put one in the, where is it, in the study. We would delete this one, and we put one in the master bedroom, so here and here. So this, this plane is currently flipped. Okay, we'll go through the floors, okay. So, so if you can see, let's see if we can line this up. So this is the first floor. And then the second floor will look more like this, I think. Yeah. So one to the right bottom and one to the left bottom. And then this one's, or one of the second floor is one on the left top, one on the right bottom. And the first floor is one on the right top, one on the left bottom. <clears throat> Which should be good, I think. And then potentially one outside. What do you guys, what do you think? Should I put one of these here on the outside? My AP layout looks way off. Okay. Great. Uh-huh. Good. What do I need to do? Looks like you have several in the back room. Oh. No? My APs are here and here. Let me, can I get rid of these wires? I want to get rid of the wires. I don't think I can. So the other things here, these are wall sockets. What I was really looking for them to be is like Ethernet drops. Basically. Yeah, it is not clear on the screen, I know. Sorry. This is kind of a mess. I wish I was able to delete these things. Maybe I can just delete this rack. Okay, here we go. That this is should be a little clear. I just deleted the rack. I don't really need it to auto do the cables for me because that was just straight line cables and that made no sense. Okay. So for example, this is my office down here at the bottom. It's flipped in our this one that I'm looking at right now is actually flipped. So our actual plan will be 180 degrees, like, flipped. Um, but here's my office down here, and here's the game room. The two APs are in those two rooms. The rest of it is just drops, uh, meaning um, Ethernet drops. I, I made this a long time ago, or a while ago, whatever. What is a proper okay? Hold on, Josh Pin. I would go with DSC Honeywell or Elk M1 and connected to home assistant, the proper alarm systems, a proper alarm system and integrations with HA. Okay, but what is a proper alarm system? I'm asking myself the same question to help guide the decision for my house. I don't have an answer why I need proper, but it also still an open question. 
Okay. That's I would say Bradley. If you used APs on the drawing, you're throwing off the wireless zones. If you used access points on the drawing, you're throwing off the wireless zones. What do you mean by that? So like on the second floor, am I throwing something off because I'm adding wireless points or Oh, no, no, no. So these drops are just wall sockets. So it shouldn't affect anything. If I, like, if I turn this one off, if I delete this one, it, nothing changed about the, about that. They're mostly just to, for me to note that I want these drops there. Okay. So does this look good? So in this section, we have a, the, First, or this is the second floor, one in the game room, one in my office, and that would be opposite corners of the house from the downstairs, where we have at least one in the bedroom and one in the uh, study downstairs. You know, maybe if I'm in the dining room, I can't have access, I, can't, I don't have any signal, but... <laughs> Maybe they'll go through the floors, as uh, someone was saying. What APs that I use? I use Nano, no, HD, AP HD, Unify AP HD. Um, I would put it outside of both those rooms. You get better coverage. So I should, I should put them like here. Somebody said, don't put them in the hallways though. Access points. I have these as options. I, I just chose the top one here. Did I choose a different one? I used APHD, the eight. O2 11 AC wave two enterprise Wi Fi XS point. Okay, HD is good. I think they have an HD nano or something like that now as well. I don't see that one on here, but okay, so someone said put it outside the room. Is that better or worse? I guess it might be better if I put one like here. But this is actually like a 22 foot ceiling, so I can't put one right there exactly. I might be able to put one in this hallway. When I said, look at the LR. This is the ACLR. I don't think that's Wi-Fi 6, though. I don't, think, I don't know if they have Wi-Fi 6 on this one. But, it, I mean, this is just kind of showing the... Uh, but it doesn't go up to... It only goes up to 867 megabytes per second. The other one goes up to 1700. So would should I do nanos or should I just do the full HD? I would like really good act, like really good wireless in my bedroom for sure.
wouldn't be opposed to putting this one in the hallway. Okay. So this, that, they don't have nanos in this section, but um, I'm, I've been looking at the nanos and that's when I was actually thinking about getting the nano HDs, but. Okay. U6LR goes through two floors. Okay. Um, okay, I'll look at that, David. <clears throat> okay, so... In the in the hallway, or in the study, in the hallway seems to actually in this diagram. In the study, in the hallway. I don't think we're going to be in the study that often. So in the hallway, it does seem like a good idea. It does seem to cover more of this area here, more of the area in the living room. I do like this. There's also the AC Pro that I've heard is pretty good. Um, I mean, there there won't be that many wireless devices, but um, I don't know if I need HD. If if it, it's for a high density, if I can get a cheaper one, I don't know if the is the Pro more less expensive than the HD. Oh, here's the Nano. Why doesn't it show in the other way? Here's the ACLR. So those are nanos now. So nano HD or AC Pro. So the Nano is $179. Why is their Pro not even on here? Well, the, the HDs are $349, so I'll probably go with Nano if I go with an HD one. I was going to end it soon, but... Huh? I forgot about it. I don't think I have just their full store here. Oh, no. Maybe it's here. So the nanos are here and they do 2.5 and 5. Um, AC Pro, where is it? Why can I not find it? Do I not have it anymore? Oh, it's here. How much is this one?
Oh, that one's 149, which is even cheaper than the other one. If you can wait, you might want to wait for Wi-Fi 6 Nano or whatever the replacement is called. Not confirmed yet, but they have a few Wi-Fi 6 lower end devices out, so it shouldn't be long. Yeah, but can even can phones even use Wi-Fi 6 right now? Like the thing is is like Wi-Fi 6, yeah, it's the next big thing, but how much I haven't guess I haven't done that much research in it, but like how much better? Yeah, I mean I would I won't be buying my network until later, but this I mean planning now is fine. Is good. Is there something wrong with going with the lights for home use? That's a good question. They're probably cheaper. So this one's the Wi Fi 6 light. $99. Definitely not, depending on the amount of connections you use. Little things are so cool. Um, okay. Um... So Wi-Fi 6 or not? I mean, will the Wi-Fi 6 access points that we have, that they have right now work? Or are you saying that these may not be good enough yet? Use the Unify 6 light. Okay. So use the Unify 6 light. That uh, in my notes. You don't need the HD. You don't have a high density. Very, very true. If it was just you, it was just so you could get the most bang out of your buck, really. There are some Wi Fi 6 phones out there and laptops. Desktops have it also. Yeah. So, I mean, Wi Fi 6.1, it's not going to be on. I mean, it's. They're not going to be on many of the devices for smart homes for a long, long time. The only devices that it would really be helpful for would be laptops, tablets, and phones. Right. But yeah, and Jaguar, like I, I do like the future proof, but also like because it isn't standard yet, is are the things that are like this access point, is it not good enough yet? You know, is because it's not standard yet, is this thing too early in the game? Is kind of what I'm trying to get at. Is should I use now Wi Fi six stuff? Of course I won't be buying this stuff probably for the next Six months, but yeah, I kind of kind of get what I mean, right? Okay, so okay, and it's not too hard. Wi-Fi likes six. Okay, okay, good to know. So I think this is probably the best bet on basements. Um, but it's not standard in all other devices yet. But okay, so Wi-Fi 6 here in these spots, I think should be fine. Okay, later, okay, well, okay, good to know. First floor and second floor. Should I put it outside or inside? I put it in this hallway. 
or in my office. Office, hallway. And if I do it here, it still gets my office pretty good. Also gets Madison's office pretty good as well. Here it gets less. I think maybe here is good. Okay, 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 okay. So this looks decent. What we've got so far. I've got I've got some notes. I'm gonna actually watch back this later. Make sure I got everything. But overall, I think we're we're good. I need to figure out how many light switches I need. Really, I mean, I think we're pretty good. Oh yeah, one other thing, really quickly, and then I'm and then, and then I'm gonna end the stream. Last thing is camera placement. So I'm thinking one on the garage, looking this way. I don't have a doorbell. One looking at the side yard. One looking. Here, this way, get the backyard, then this one getting the side yard here. I will also have probably one more. Here. Looking kind of that way. And then the only bald spots would be this area here next to the study and this one next to our our room in the back. But I mean, if they're able to get through this section of our house, I would be pretty impressed. What do you guys think about this placement here or the cameras? One looking over the garage in front with the have a doorbell. One looking at the side yard. One look two looking at the backyard. One from this angle. One from inside the patio area. And then one looking at the side yard as well. Cool, cool, cool. 
nobody seems to be active much anymore, which is fine. Everybody's been here for so long. I appreciate everyone's support so far. Um, I have a good plan now, I think. I'm going to rewatch this and go over it again. And then I'll put this into a video later um, of what I plan on, I planned on doing and actually do. But I will, uh, I will talk to you guys later. I'm going to end it here. Uh, probably look for a new, new video next weekend on something. But, um, but yeah, so it looks like Dr. Z's is actually streaming right now. So let's go ahead and just read his chat here. Yes, everybody go to Dr. Z's. Say that Zach Barrett sent you. Tell him. Let him know. All right, everyone. Have a good day and uh, hope everyone.